from Beaver Stadium in University Park, Pennsylvania. It's the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers against the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Hello again, everybody. I'm Stan Saverin, along with George Paterno, set to bring you today's game between Penn State 2-0 and Rutgers 0-1. George, it figures Penn State can handle this team, but I think Joe Paterno is looking to see how his team will play. Uh, you're correct, Stan. I think Penn State should be able to handle Rutgers today, but uh, to Joe, this is a big game, not maybe to the fans, but to the coach, because Penn State has really not played as a national contender, even though they won the first two games. To have a great team, a team that can win the national championship, you must be good in all phases of the game, running, passing, defense against the run, defense against the pass, plus your specialty teams. To date, the only thing outstanding about Penn State has been their specialty teams. Their passing has been a little bit above average. The running has been just average. The defense against the run, very uncharacteristically, the Penn State's opponents have gained almost as many yards on the ground as Penn State has had and gained more first downs. So Penn State has a, a lot to get together today. I think Joe Paterno will be looking at this game as the day to put the pieces together. Because, as George mentioned, the schedule gets tougher from here on out. So perhaps a barometer today as to how Penn State plays against Rutgers. George and I will be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Captain's meeting in the center of the field. Rutgers, of course, will call the toss of the coin. Strong wind blowing here this afternoon. 15 to 30 miles an hour from the north to the south or left to right as you view it on the screen. So keep that in mind, depending on who's off uh, on offense, may be a definite factor in the game. We've seen in many occasions as Rutgers now comes on the field, that will be a factor in the game. Penn State has won the toss and elected to defend the goal. So already, George, we have seen the wind indeed will be a factor. I've seen them do that before, Stan, and it worked out real well. They want to get a, a good kick deep and, and try to put Rutgers in a hole right from the beginning of the game. So Penn State wins the toss, and they have elected to defend the goal. Again, they will have the wind in the first and the fourth quarters. And again, the wind... 15 to 30 miles an hour, gusting up to 30, and that'll be moving left to right on your screen, north to south. You no, know, for the people who like statistics, somebody come up with this one, Stan. They said the team that kicks off usually is the winning team. So uh, that's interesting. Is most that people, true? True. Uh, most of the time, people uh, teams will accept or uh, uh, decide to receive, but the team that kicks off wins most of the time. All right, so. You don't have to necessarily be a good coin toss caller to be a winning football team, apparently, because, of course, they do like to receive most of the times they win the toss. Massimo Manka will do the kicking for That's Penn so State. He has been nothing short of brilliant in the first two games this year. He has yet to miss on anything. Perfect on extra points, eight for eight. Perfect on field goal. And the freshman coming in and doing an outstanding job. So he will kick off to open the football game. Back deep for Rutgers, number 22, John Cummins, Dwayne Hooper, Penn State won the toss, but they have elected to kick off. There's a very strong wind blowing this afternoon, north to south or left to right as you look at it, 15 miles an hour, but gusting up to 30, and you see the flag blowing straight out. Well, actually, you know, there's two advantages. You get a deep kick, and then if you get a deep kick and the opponent takes the ball on the 20, trying to throw the ball into a stiff win is difficult. John Cummins, Albert Smith, and Dwayne Hooper back deep. Bank approaches. Five yards deep into the end zone. Smith will take it there, and Rutgers will operate first and ten at their own 20-yard line. So Massimo Manka continues to kick the ball deep into the end zone. The officials are referee Thomas Temmert, Michael Kuhn, Alvin Kelly, Joseph Carroll, James Klingensmith, 
Joseph Dorenzo, Daniel Sullivan, and Daniel Leitzel. Those are our officials, the clock operators, the last two. First down, 10 yards to go. First play from scrimmage for Rutgers from their own 20-yard line. In the I formation, they'll line up in that most of the afternoon. Man in motion to the near side is Baker. Give the tail back, Smith. Left tackle, got a hole. Look out, 35-40, and saved by Mark Robinson of Dan Biondi. A 22-yard gain, 24 yards. Albert Smith all the way out to the 44-yard line. This is a beautifully executed play. It's just an off-tackle play. He gets a great block from his fullback, 39 more, and he almost breaks it. This boy's a freshman. Here's the give inside down to the fullback, and he's got room. Ryan Moore into Penn State territory, down to the 46-yard line, and very close to the first down. Mark Robinson again making the tackle. Well, Penn State, George, came into the game with a lethargic feeling. Uh, they were snapped out of it in a big hurry. Tony Cella, Clement Udovich, Joe DiGilio, Lamont Green, and Rich Spitzer doing the job. Jack LaPrairie is the quarterback, split in. Eric Johnson, the fullback, Moore, tailback, Albert Smith, the freshman, and the flanker, Andrew Baker. First down, Rutgers. Back-to-back -back first downs. This is a great start for the Rutgers. Well, they have now picked up 34 yards in two carries and two rushing plays. 24 and 10. Baker goes wide to the right side. Johnson split left. Again, the eye backfield. La Prairie back to throw. He's hit and dropped for a loss. Dave Ophar coming in to make the tackle. The sack along with Scott Radisson gets the sack. The loss will be back to the Rutgers 48-yard line. It's the first down situation. Rutgers decides to go to the pass. Penn State puts the rush on. Up for 67, gets up from the ground, makes the tackle. Now, the Prairie is not only their leading pass, he's their leading rusher. Rush for 70 yards in the opening game against Syracuse. Second and long. Here's the sprint draw to Smith. Going nowhere. Hit behind the line of scrimmage and drop for a two-yard loss. That was another fine play by Dave Opar to tackle number 67. Penn State is staying in a basic defense right now, which basically looks like the 3-4 defense. There's your defensive line. Harris, Hines, Gattuso, and Ashley, the great defensive end. And the linebackers, Kelly, Radisic, Papenroth, Hero, Harry Hamilton, the corners, Biondi and Roger Jackson, Mark Robinson at safety. Third down, 17 to go. LaFrairie fakes once, goes left, screen pass, out in the flat. Brian Moore was in running room, gets some good yardage, but he steps out of bounds at the Penn State 46-yard line. They'll bring it back. Dave Ofer chased him down from behind. Little screen to the fullback. Took it up the sideline, Stan, but he didn't make that first down. And people are going to second-guess Coach Frank Burns after coming out, running two running plays very successfully for first downs. He went to the pass. They were dropped for a big loss, and they put themselves in a hole. Gary Liska averaging 33.8 yards per punt. Back deep. Get it away from about his own 43-yard line. Harry Hamilton, one of the deep men, along with Mark Robinson. Here's the kick. It's a line drive. Coming straight to Mark Robinson, doubles back and loses yardage, and he'll be hit and dropped at his own 11-yard line. So the kick, not that strong. Jim Martello made the tackle for Rutgers. Not a strong kick, but Robinson helped out by backtracking, so Penn State will start deep in their own territory at their own 11. Well, people looking for the Penn State offensive line to come of age. Ron Heller, Bill Constant tackle, Dick McGinnis and Pete Spiro coming off the ankle injury at the guards. Mark Battaglia at center. First down and 10. Pitch wide to one. Not much running when he gets off of the 13-yard line for a gain of a couple. Dan, I think Rutgers' uh, defensive strategy today will be they know Penn State's running game has been sputtering, and they know Joe Paterno wants to get some balance into his offense. And I'm sure he's going to, uh, Rutgers is going to try the defense to run first. Here we got Garrity, Blackledge, Warner, Williams, and Jackson. Very dangerous group. Penn State has scored eight touchdowns this year, all through the air. Second down, eight yards to go. Receivers split either side, and it's Warner again looking for room. 
Gets across the 15 and out to the 17. It'll be a gain of four. It'll bring up third down and four. Bill Pickle makes the tackle. Senior, 6'6", 265. Rutgers plays a basic 3-4 defense, as we call it today. We used to call it the 5-2. It's a 3-4 defense with four deep. Penn State third and four, slot to the right. Kenny Jackson, the slot man, Garrity foot wide to the right. Pro set backfield. Out in the flat, incomplete. Warner could not hang on to the ball. Juggerbutt, it's an incompletion. Black was his first attempt of the day. That'll bring up fourth down and six. Carl Howard, the left cornerback, along with Tony Zel uh, John Zelenka, up on the coverage, and that'll bring up a punt. Ralph Giacomoro. Averaging 40.4 yards per punt. Harold Young back deep at his own 35-yard line. Along with John Cummins, and we are going to have... We have a legal procedure, the right tackle from Penn State move. So indeed, if it is from Penn State, that means Giacomero will have to punt it out of his own end zone. Let's hear the officials call. Procedure on Penn State. Joe Paterno doesn't like it. That'll march him back an additional five yards. And the line of scrimmage goes back to the 12. And indeed, Giacomero will receive the punt in his own end zone. Once again, now here's a, uh, a, an opportunity to use the wind. We know he's got a strong leg and he has a strong wind at his back. Giacomero, most of this season, has been forced to kick short because of field position. Here's a case where he can really air it out. Good snap, no rush. He oh, wow. gets off a howitzer. Cummins back at his 27. Got some room. Out to the 38 and dives forward to the 40 yard line. Steve Scepter made the tackle. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State nothing, Rutgers nothing. We'll be back right after this. First down and 10. Again, the eyes. They'll use it most of the day. And a whistle before they can get it off. The give was to Al Smith, but whistle blew before. Now that was the same play that they opened the ball game with. They tried to come back to the left side to go off tackle, but uh, they the illegal procedure against Rutgers. By the way, that was a 61-yard punt by Ralph Giacomero, a 13-yard return. That's what they mean when they say it's a booming punt. He almost kicked it out of the stadium. Almost brought rain with that baby. Well, that'll jack up the old average. And again, really, Jack Amaro has not had a chance to air it out. So it's back five for Rutgers. First down and 15 at their own 35-yard line. Motion near side. Tailback. Hit and upended right near the line of scrimmage. Al Harris, left linebacker coming in, making the stop and upend. And it's a gain of really negligible yardage, second down and 15. I know Penn State's defense is tightened up a little bit. You'll see number 67, Arpar, forces the ball to the inside. Harris pins from his end position, and there's no gain. Receivers split either side. LaFrary back to throw. He scrambles past the line of scrimmage and a gain of a couple out to the 37. It'll be third down and 13. Dave Opar and Dave Papenroth made the tackle and the scouting report said George that LaPrairie can throw the football but he doesn't have much poise he will scramble at the drop of a hat he felt the pressure and he started to run but Penn State was rushing the pass and much better than they did against Maryland last year last week Boomer Esiason escaped many times and made big plays while he was scrambling third down 13 a slot to the right side LaPrairie looking he'll run off the 38 and to the original line of scrimmage across the 40. It'll bring up fourth down and 10. Ofar and Gattuso made the tackle. Well, they, they scouted the Maryland Penn State. This is a similar play to Maryland scored a touchdown. It's a bootleg action to the right. He wants to throw back on a post position. This time Penn State has it covered. He tries to run with the football. Once again, no game. 
Kenny Jackson back deep to receive the punt from Liska, who did not get off a good punt, but again, he is kicking against the wind about 15, 20 miles an hour. A little better this time. Coming down to Kevin Bow. Cuts up field. Got it. He's got a wide open field. One man to beat. The 40, 35, and drag down at the 29 yard line. Jed Karpinski brought him down, but Kevin Bow was the punt return. Man, I was just going to say something about Kevin. People don't realize he's the leading, leading all purpose gainer. Watch this. We've got a flag down. Oh, flag down, but still was a great run. He's dangerous. He saw the cutback, takes it up the sidelines, another cutback to the middle of the field, and he's off and running. But Kevin Bow is the leading all-purpose uh, ground uh, gainer on Penn State, not Williams and not Warner. Well, they'll bring it back, and all the way inside the eight-yard line, that turns out. It's a clip against Penn State. It turns out, in essence, to be a 70-yard penalty. Well, they really hurt you. First down and 10, Penn State. They've got the win, remember. They were not able to pick up a first down in their first possession. Penn State comes out of the eye. John Williams, the fullback. Garrity right. Kenny Jackson left. They've got the win with, to their back. Williams, right guard out to the 15-yard line, or rather the 10-yard line, pardon me. Gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight yards to go. Greg Garrity comes out wide to the right. Kenny Jackson split to the left. They're in a pro set this time. Now they move Warner to a wing right. Blackridge batted down at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. Bill Pickle knocked it down. That's the second good play he has made. 6'6", six, six, senior, 265 pounds. A 51-yard punt return by Kevin Bow nullified on the clipping penalty. Now it is third down and eight, and George obviously that dramatically changed the field position. It sure does. Blackridge uh, tried to audible that play, but uh, Pickle was there. This time they flip-flop. Jackson right and Garrity left on third down and eight. Warner, nowhere to go. Makes a nice run for himself. Out of nothing, gets across the 15 to the 17 yard line. But that'll be a yard shy of that first down. It'll bring up fourth down. Lionel Washington makes the tackle. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. They are going to call for the change. It appeared to be a bit short to me. He made a great uh, spin off a tackle there, and it was a definitely second effort. Well, I said it was a bit short. Does that qualify as a bit? Penn State will be forced to punt once again. Well, Giacomero, who got off a 61-yarder in his first attempt, will kick it away again to Harold Young on the near side. John Cummins out on the far side, and they stand at their own 30-yard line, this time respecting Giacomero's leg. No rush. He gets off a high floating kick. Fair catch called for and taken by Cummins at his own 42-yard line. So it's a 41-yard punt, no return on the play, and Rutgers will take over first down and 10 at their own 42-yard line. And the win being the factor it is, George, Penn State elected to defend the goal, and you want to get points on the board when you have the win because you won't get it again until the fourth quarter. Uh, so far, Rutgers has had all the field positions, Dan. Uh... And they have moved the ball better. Mercer heads in the tight end, switches from left to right side. Man in motion, Baker near side. And again, a roll. LaPrairie fires, and it is caught and taken by Andrew Baker. A little swing pass. They run him out of bounds at the 49-yard line. It'll be a gain of seven, second down and three. On this particular play, we get sprint out action. Watch LaPrairie coming out to his right. He hits Baker on it. Just a quick out. Makes a nice game. 
La Prairie two weeks ago against Syracuse did hit on 16 out of 24. He was also intercepted twice. Second and three. Baker in motion to the far side. Here's Smith the tailback driving his way into Penn State territory to the 47 yard line and that will be good for a first down. Dave Pappenroth made the tackle assisted by strong safety Mark Robinson. Well they put a man in motion to get a flood situation. Linebacker moved a little bit and Smith took it up inside and made the first down. Is the linebacker supposed to move with the motion? Well, it's according to what the defense is, Stan. If he, he probably, if they have a flood zone, that means there's be three receivers on one side of the field. First and ten. Rutgers. Penn State looking for their first first down. Baker motion. Away from the ball. LaFerry keeps, drives inside, and is not forward across the 45 and inside to the 44-yard line. A gain of three, second and seven. Mike Garrett made the tackle. Well, this is just a keeper. It's a fake of the fullback. Now, let's watch him fake to the fullback. It's a keeper all the way, takes it up, makes a short game. But I'd like to point out, uh, Sir, uh, Rutgers has had two weeks to prepare for this game, and you can do a lot of things early in the game. They obviously saw the Maryland films and watched them a great deal because of Sias, who did a lot of the same thing. Second and seven. Again, Baker in motion. Pitch wide to Smith. He danced away from one tackle and drives down to the 41-yard line. It'll be a gain of three and bring up third and three. Kelly and Roger Puzz made the tackle, but a nice bit of running by Al Smith, the freshman tailback, six feet, 204 pounds. Last, uh, or not last week, two weeks ago in their first game against Syracuse, 40 yards rushing on 11 carries. And he is playing out of a pretty good runner in Dwayne Hooper, the freshman is, so you know he's got some talent. Third down and three. Here's the roll. And LaPrairie is caught and dropped. Nice play by Dave Ophar, catching him from behind just as he turns it upfield. He is shy of the first down. In fact, he loses a yard on the play. It'll bring up fourth down and four yards to go. Fourth down. So once again, Gary Liska will be called upon to punt. He's done an adequate job against the win. 6.20 to play in the first quarter. We have no score in the ball game. There is Liska, averaging 33.8 coming into the game. Here's the kick, looking for the corner. Mark Robinson, he's got a hole. Here he goes. He's got one man to beat his blockers ahead. The 40, he's going to go. Mark Robinson is gone for a touchdown. And there are no flags on the field. That was the 92-yard stand, and we were talking at the top of the show that Penn State specialty teams has been outstanding, and there we get another incident. It was a line drive type of a kick. He got a key block. Let's watch the key block when he catches the ball. That springs him. Right here, he gets a key block, breaks it up the sideline, and he's off and running like a locomotive. Now he makes a good decision here, takes to the inside, breaks to the outside, and turns the kicker completely around, and he's in the end zone. 92 yards, punt return. And a great block by Harry, Harry Hamilton that sprung him. Here's Manka. It is good. Manka is nine for nine. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State seven, Rutgers nothing. We'll be back right after this. Ninety-two yard punt return from Mark Robinson, who has not been returning punts thus far this year. Well, Manka, with Penn State leading seven, I think we'll kick it off. John Cummins on the far side. Al Smith in the middle, Wayne Hooper, the backup tailback, on the near side. That's Smith, the middleman. On kickoff returns thus far this year, Hooper averaging 17 yards a kick. Their main kickoff returner, Len Beleza, is injured and did not make the trip. So Manka, with the wind behind him, and the wind against him at this point, because the ball blew the ball, uh, blew it off the tee. Well, Stan, you mentioned about Robinson not being back there. Penn State to date had been using a single safety, but because of the win, they put Robinson and Bow both back there, and Mark got his hands on the ball, and he knew what to do with it. And also, I think, George, they put a, another safety back there because they figured they're going to kick to the corner for field position. You're exactly right. Well, and it goes down again. 
You might want to go to the refrigerator. You're going to have time to get a sandwich and uh, toast the bread if you want by the time we get this uh, this uh, kickoff underway. 5.54 to play first quarter. Penn State leading 7 to nothing on the 92-yard punt return by Mark Robinson. I'll remind you that Kevin Bow had one for 51 yards, which was called back on a clip. So again, the Penn State kicking game especially team looking extremely good in the early part of the season. Line drives. Smith takes it at the one. To the 15, 20, across the 20 and out to the 24-yard line. And a good hard return by Al Smith, a 23-yard return. Ryan McCann made the tackle. So Robert Rutgers, which has been able to move the football against the wind, will have it first and 10. We want to remind you that announcers on this telecast are contracted and paid for by Total Communication Systems and any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of this game without the express written consent of Total Communication Systems is prohibited. Jack LaFrary to throw on first down. Incomplete, the receiver fell down. Looking for Eric Johnson at uh, Bowag, two receivers in the area. Johnson. And Baker fell down at the 35. He might have had a chance, but the receiver fell down. It'll be second and 10. Well, Rutgers is a, they've come to play. I mean, that's a first down situation on their own 24 yard line with the wind in the face and they go to the pass. Uh, Coach really hates to see that because Rutgers has really played Penn State nose to nose and you get beat on a punt return. Second and 10 from the 24. Baker motion near side. Quarterback draw, LaFrary. Out to the 28-29 yard line. Give him a gain of five. It'll be third down and five. Roger Puzz caught up with him to make the stop. Well, Penn State has changed their defensive alignment now to, to more of a look of a 4-3-4 type of a situation. That was a design draw play. LaFrey faked the pass, came back up and made a short game. Third down, five yards to go. Clock runs with 5.15 to play first quarter. Penn State leading seven and other. Standard formation. Johnson split left and Baker comes in motion near side with the eye backfield. LaFrary looking, throwing, and it is caught by Eric Johnson at the 41 yard line. And a nice catch it was. Eric Johnson, a senior, 6'3, 190, leading receiver on Rutgers Ball Club, catching five against Syracuse two weeks ago. I, what, what Rutgers is doing now by put, putting the man in motion, they're flooding his own. Now Johnson gets in a little seam behind the line back in front of the corner and makes a nice catch. The ball was well thrown off. Now they come out of that eye and go to the pro set. The Prairie rolls the other way and he's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by John Walter. He threw it right into his arms. That time I believe they tried to hit Smith. No, that was Moore coming out of the backfield. Let's see if we can catch it. This time he comes out to his right. Left hand is thrown across the body is very difficult. And who's that goes up? John Walter made a nice defensive play. He was looking for fullback Brian Moore out there, but he did not loft it enough. Second down and 10. Rutgers at their own 41. Here's Smith off right tackle and nowhere to go. Give him a yard. John Walter again coming in. John Walter started this season as a tight end. But with McCloskey there, Joe Paterno wanted to get John Walter some playing time and switched him over to defense, and he has done a good job thus far. Well, they, they, they think they need a little bit more beef at the defensive end position, uh, and uh, Walter gives them that. 6'3", 220, sophomore from Westmont, New Jersey. Third down and nine, out of the pro set. LaFrey looking at the flat that is caught, but not enough for the first down. Coming up strong. On the play, hero Harry Hamilton to take down fullback Brian Moore. The gain of a couple, it'll be fourth down. All right, Penn State uses a three-man rush. Now, LaPrere sees his receiver over to the right. This is very well played by Hamilton. He comes up, it's, a, it's the fullback Moore, makes the recession, but Hamilton's there. So Liska, for the fourth time, will go back to punt. Kevin Bow and Kenny Jackson standing at their own 15-yard line. Bow to the near side, Kenny Jackson to the far side. This time they've got some room to maneuver, so it's only a two deep. Liska's punt this time is a nice one. Bow approaches at his 22. Looks for a hole outside and doesn't quite get there. Out to the 28. And a good tackle on the play for Rutgers. 
by Barry Bukowski, and had he not made the tackle, there was definitely a scene. There's a timeout of the action to score. Penn State 7, Rutgers nothing. We'll be back right after this. Penn State starts from their own 27-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Black with play fake, looking over the middle, and it is incomplete. Intended for Mike McCloskey. He had it for a moment, but a jarring hit on the play by Carl Howard, among others, and McCloskey is down. Well, this is a catchable ball. It's a fake of the tailback off tackle. McCloskey be coming left to right on a deep post. Now, watching the ball hits his fingertips, should have caught the ball, and then he gets hit by the defensive back. Now, Garrity was over in that area, too, which he shouldn't be, and he brought some trouble over there. It looked like, George, McCloskey looked up to see who was approaching rather than watching the football. And I think it was Garrity's man who, he, who, who broke over the middle also, the defensive corner to put the, uh, the hit on McCloskey. But we've got a moment. Thus far, we have not seen Penn State moving the football on the ground. They have not made a first down. That's right. That's exactly right. This is their third offensive possession. They have yet to make a first down. In case you're joining us late, Mark Robinson provided the only score of the game with a 92-yard punt return. So Penn State, they'll come up second down and 10 yards to go, still looking for their first first down. So McCloskey will take a breather. I hope he's all right. Kirk Bowman, the backup tight end, a junior, 6'2", 238, out of Mechanicsburg, will take his place. Frank Burns. Head coach at Rutgers. Here's a man who has had just an exceptional record. He is 70 and 31, winning nearly 70% of his game. In the coaching profession, Frank Burns is known as a class guy. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy, and he's done an excellent job coaching the Rutgers football team. Joe and I played against him in college. We know him very well, and we respect him very much. I didn't think he was that old. <laughs> I know you two guys are. I didn't know that he was. McCloskey. It, in birdie land for a couple of minutes, hearing a few tweets, but he's all right. Well, he won't get any sympathy when he gets off the field. They're going to yell at him for dropping the ball. Pass, that's right. Sure, he'll be back, walked off under his own power. It'll be second down now and 10 yards to go, and indeed, Kirk Bowman has come in to take McCloskey's place. Well, sir, as again, I say, Rutgers is doing what we figured. They're playing for the run very tight, and they're daring Penn State to throw the ball. Kevin Bow now flanked way out to the left. Kenny Jackson flat left, and this time they come out in a pro set. Blackwood's looking for his first completion of the day. Pitch wide to Warner, looks for a block, does not quite get it. Gets across the 30 and out into the 32-yard line. It'll be a gain of four and bring up third down and six yards to go. Jim Dumont, one of the inside linebackers, made the tackle. Now, Dumont shows great lateral pursuit here. It's a pitch to Warner, and obviously they're keying him. Now, watch number 53. Dumont go down the line of scrimmage and come up and make the tackle. Nice play. And don't get confused because Dumont has a twin brother, number 35. Just reverse those numbers. Bob Dumont, who is the defensive end, number 35. Third down and a, a six. Blackwood's looking wide open. Kenny Jackson drops it. Wide open at the 50-yard line. Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. Well, what, what has been so reliable for Penn State in the first two games, scoring eight touchdowns via the pass, their passing game seems to have broken down a little bit right here in the first uh, quarter. Dropping two very catchable balls. That'll bring up fourth down and six. And once again, it'll be Ralph Giacomero. Almost a snap, but gets it away and gets off a short kick. Fielded by Harold Young. Takes it at his 30 and dives forward to the 35-yard line. So, good field position. Punt of only 34 yards. Giacomero averaging 50 on the day and a little over 40 on the season. So, with 2.28 to go in the first quarter, Rutgers takes over. First and 10 at their own 35 yard line. Baker motion. Play fake. LaPrairie looking deep for Baker, and it is caught. He's going for a touchdown. Andrew Baker in a 65-yard touchdown pass. Well, Stan, they did what I was afraid of. They picked on Dan Biondi. 
It was a little play action play, Baker to draw. They ran Baker up and up. Now watch Baker be the left of your screen. He comes up the sidelines, a little out fake. It's an excellent throw. He hits him on a dead run. He gets behind Biondi, takes the ball in full stride, and just like that, it could be a tie ball game. And that is the first touchdown Rutgers has scored this season. Against Syracuse, they scored two field goals and a safety. The two field goals were by Alex Falsonelli. Well, last week, uh, Maryland picked on Biondi a little bit with Russell Davis, and now Rutgers comes out and gets a quick one. Kick is up, and the kick is good. We've got ourselves a tie ball game. 2.19 to play in the first quarter, 7-7 the score, and Andrew Baker, who came into the game with four receptions, that will be number five, he was averaging just 8.5 yards per catch, and that now will jump dramatically, a 65-yard touchdown pass. And one thing for sure, will that pump up the Rutgers players? In essence, they have had the better of it through the entire first quarter. The only thing they were behind on was the scoreboard. Now they are even in that and leading all of their categories. We have played almost all of the first quarter, and Penn State is still looking for their first first down of the football game. Well, we talked about what this game meant. You got to win it first, of course. But Joe Paterno really wanted his club to look sharp, to look crisp. He really felt this was a turning point, this being the first quarter of the season. Today's game was a turning point as to how his team well, would play. Well, it's still early, Stan, sure. uh, just for them to get some things going for them. But uh, Rutgers come out, made a couple of quick first downs, and uh, they've had excellent field position all day long, and they finally capitalized on it. Tony Mumford and Kevin Bow. Back deep to receive the kick from Alex Falsonelli. There's Bob. Kick against the wind. Deep kick. Bow two yards deep, and he'll come out of there. room. Got a seam on the sideline. Gets a throw 25 and out to the 28-yard line. Rutgers close nicely. Bill Houston, the reserve defensive back, one of the safeties, made the tackle. Well, Penn State will start at their own 28-yard line, and this is the best field position they've started with thus far this year. Kevin Bow coming into the game, averaging 24.6 yards per return. That return good for 30 yards. So Penn State needs to get that offense in gear. Lou Bartek starting at right guard. Spiros was hurt last week. Give inside. John Williams. About three out of the 31-yard line. Second down and seven yards to go. Penn State has tried it both ways, George, inside and outside, have not been able to make well, any yardage. What Rutgers is doing on first and second downs, which are running downs, they're single covering the wide receivers and jamming the inside and, and, and trying to stop the, the running game, which means that Penn State on first and second downs they are going to have to go to, uh, deep to their wide receivers. Wide receivers, Garrity right, Kenny Jackson left, high backfield, Williams and Warner behind Blackman. Slight motion. Blackman throws, it is caught by Kenny Jackson at the Rutgers 47-yard line. Well, this is just about what I was trying to say. Second down now, you watch Jackson coming on a deep post. Rutgers is giving him a lot of room deep over the middle in the secondary. Excellent protection. The ball is well thrown. Just a little behind him. Nice catch by Jackson. Big play for Penn State. Bill Houston made the initial hit, but not before. Penn State picks up 17 and a first down near the Rutgers 49-yard line. First completion of the day for Blackman. Big rush. He throws in the flat, and it is caught by Garrity. Another great catch by Greg Garrity. Carl Howard pushed him out of bounds, but another great grab by Garrity, just like last week. Well, after the replay, I got an astounding statistic about Garrity. Will fake to the tailback Warner. They're keying him. A deep out, another complete turnaround on his body, first down. Out of the last 30 catches that he's made, out of 31 receptions in two years, 30 have gone for first down. First down and 10 yards to go. Joe Holes in his fullback. 
Gives to Warner. Got some room. 25, 20. Fumble the football, and Rutgers has it. Bill Houston made the recovery. Warner with a second effort after he was in at the 25, popped it up, and Rutgers has recovered the fumble. But notice how he's, after you complete a couple of passes, it opens up the running game. His Warner makes a good cut. He's always trying to get that extra yard. This time he just pops loose, goes into the secondary, and it's recovered by Houston. Bill Houston made the recovery. The hit caused by middle guard Randy Hannis. So Rutgers coming off their touchdown has the ball again, stopping a Penn State drive. First and 10 at their own 19. There's a get inside and a couple over left guard. Scott Radisick coming in to make the tackle on Bryant Moore, the fullback. It'll be second down and eight, under a minute to play first quarter. You don't like to see that turnover there because Penn State had kind of re-grabbed control of the game. LaPrairie, number 16, on second down and eight. Slot, now out of the slot, Baker coming near side. Pitch wide to Smith, looking for the hole, in trouble, he's hit, he's dropped for a loss back at the 15-yard line. That was a great play by Ken Kelly. Shut the ball carry off to the inside, Smith decided to get outside, up came Hamilton, made a, a great tackle for a loss. Let's watch this, this is great defensive end play, it's a pitch sweep, and watch Smith, he gets shut off to the inside by Kelly, forcing him to go too deep, Hamilton gets the credit, but Kelly made the play. Tell you what else is important, he went out of bounds, stopping the clock at 19 seconds to play. So if Rutgers is incomplete, they will have to punt against the win. They'll Third probably down. try a draw or a screen here, Stan. Third and 14. Here's the pitch wide inside. Tailback Smith out to the 18. It'll be fourth down and 11 yards to go and a flag down on the play. Let's see who it's against. I'm not so sure, George, that Penn State shouldn't call a timeout and get that punt. Uh, against the win. Well, the, I it, it would be a good bit of strategy, but I don't know if they want to waste a timeout now, which they might need at the end of the second quarter. It's just a question of how bad that wind is down there. Illegal, but, illegal use of hands against Rutgers. It'll be fourth down and 11. Or third down and about 24. Well, of course, that stopped the clock. But It'll start again on the snap. Decline. That'll bring up fourth down. Let's so in essence, they got what uh, what you suggested, anyhow. And they call the timeout. Okay. Well, I'm not Italian, but I fit in the Paterno family of coaches, <laughs> I think. There. The wind is blowing at about 15, but it is gusting up to near 30 miles an hour. So Penn State uses one of their timeouts. It still leaves them with two. 13 seconds to go. You see the win. Now it died down a little bit. As soon as the camera's on it, the flag is a bit camera shy. By the way, in case you're wondering, the flag is at half mast today uh, in memoriam of Grace Kelly, who's, uh, of course, from Philadelphia. Her funeral, tragically, uh, being held today. And that's why the flags are at half mast. Kevin Bow and Kenny Jackson will be back to receive the fun. And actually, Liska has done a pretty good job kicking against the wind. Well, they've thrown pretty well against the win also. I was, I was wondering just how strong it is. Bow and Jackson at their own 40. Awaiting the kick by Liska. They got the return on. Low kick. Bounces. They get a roll. Bow picks it up his 38. 45. 50. Look out. He's to the 40. And he's finally hit and dropped. Here in the Penn State 35-yard line. Nice return by Kevin Bow. Bob Dumont finally knocked them out of bounds. But he gives Penn State excellent field position. He's That's absolutely the, great back there. That's the end of the first quarter of action. The score, Penn State 7, Rutgers 7. We'll be back right after this. End of the first quarter cue. There was no further scoring, and the first quarter ended with a score, Penn State 7, Rutgers 7. We'll be back right after this. First play of the second quarter, Penn State. First and 10 at the Rutgers, 35. Black is looking and firing, incomplete. Dropped by Kurt Bowman, the backup tight end in there for McCloskey. Oh, that was a beautiful play. It was he wide open, but that's three out of the last balls that Blackledge has thrown have been dropped. 
Great drop back action, good call, first down. Bowman goes about 15 yards down, the tight end curls in, wide open. Actually wide open, he took his, his eyes off the ball. Flatwood, 47 yards rushing for, Penn, uh, for Rutgers, 96 passing. Look at the difference in total yardage. Again, Penn State still does not have a first down. Second down and 10. Warner, got a hole. He's got a first down now. Look at that run to the 20 and all the way down to the 16-yard line. A 19-yard gain for Kurt Warner, and what a run. I was going to say, he's got one now. He shot out of there like a cannon. Watch it. This is a draw play that hits up in the inside. Cole, 20 gets him a good block. The Bataglia, the center gave him a good block. But when he's in the open, he's like a stallion on the loose. 19-yard gain for Kurt Warner. I think that's the longest game from scrimmage for him this year on the run. First down and 10, Penn State at the Rutgers 17-yard line. Warner again, looking for the kickoff block and doesn't get it. And a good, solid shot by Jim Dumont, the linebacker, stopped Warner after less than a yard's gain. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Well, Stan, Kurt might be a little rusty. He hasn't been carrying the ball too much. It's not often I can criticize him. That time there was a big scene to the inside. If he turned up field, he could have made himself a nice game. He tried to get outside. Gain of one, second down and nine yards to go. Penn State had to wait until the first minute of the second quarter to get their first first down Notice of the, the game. Notice the single coverage on Jackson. Blackwood looking, firing, finding Garrity down to the two yard line. Joe Corbin finally made the tackle, but on the crossing pattern, Brett Garrity makes the reception and a flag on the play, probably a face mask. There's a face mask, but Stan, watch this. This is man-to-man -man coverage. Now, Garrity's coming across the field. Corbin is covering a man-to-man. -man. And what they've done, they play man-to-man in the secondary so they can play the run up tight and try to shut off the running game. But that's awfully difficult for the secondary to cover these great receivers man-to-man. -man. Now I get to use the statistic. 32 catches for Greg Garrity in the last two years. 31 have been for first downs. Astounding. So you talk about your clutch receiver. He's the man. This penalty will be measured in centimeters. Dan, we've only been doing a few games together, but in the two years that he's been playing, I cannot remember him dropping a ball. He really is a clutch receiver. So the penalty moves it up a yard. First down. Goal to go from the one. Power eye right. John Williams near the goal line and touchdown. Out of the power eye, John Williams scores the touchdown. The first rushing touchdown for Penn State this year. And this is what Joe Paterno wants to see. It's a simple off tackle play. They give it to the far back. Williams, they got two backs leading up. Pull the guard around. He gets in the crease for the touchdown. So after the outstanding punt return, by Kevin Bow, Penn State marches 35 yards. Warner with a nice 19-yard run, a pass to Garrity to the two, penalty to the one, and Williams goes over. Manka is good again. Penn State takes the lead. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 14, Rutgers 7. We'll be back right after this. Massimo Manka to kick off for Penn State, this time against the win. Hooper, Smith, and Cummins deep. Manka gets off a kick. Coming to Hooper, it is 2, 10, 15, 20. Look out! Needs a block outside of the 35 and out near the 39-yard line. Dwayne Hooper, averaging 17 yards of return, returns that one 37 yards. Massimo Manka made the tackle. Well, let's watch this. Now, Hooper has the ball. The Kamikaze squad gives themselves up, but he finds a seam up the sideline. He's another good-looking running back. Brought down by the kicker. They got caught inside. First down and 10 yards to go. Rutgers at their own 39-yard line, trailing 14-7. Baker, motion near side. Back to throw, looking for Baker again, and it is incomplete. Again, they look for Baker on the one-on-one, -on -one, 
with Biondi. This time the pass was not well thrown, and Mark Robinson came over to offer help. Well, and he's also throwing the ball very high. Now, Biondi's not a tall man. He's about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and a lot of these flankers are about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, try to get the ball up high, and, he, and the receiver can out jump a small defensive back. Biondi's only 5'9", the Penn State scoring drive, 35 yards and five plays. John Williams pounding over from the one, giving Penn State the lead at 14-7. This is the first time Rutgers has had the wind at their backs. Give inside Bryant Moore the fullback and not much room over right guard. Give him a three yards out to the 42. It'll be third down and seven. Dave Ofer making the tackle. Steve Scepter also coming off the pile. And again, Penn State shuffling defensive players. Well, they're getting better play from their defensive tackles and especially up far so far. And uh, this is what they have to do. They got to get some toughness in the inside. So it is third down, relatively long yardage. The Prairie to throw. He'll scramble out of there, but he's hit, and he has dropped short of the first down. The Prairie didn't wait very long, and again, the scouting report said he does not stand in the pocket for a very long period of time. He'll tuck it up and go. He did that time. Picked up an additional five yards, but it'll be fourth down and three yards to go, and that'll call for punter Gary Liska once, once again. Well, it's, it's, a, it's very important that Rutgers be able to stop Penn State specialty teams because every time they kick, uh, Penn State's running the ball back down their throat. And one punt return didn't even count. Kevin Bauer, 51 yarder, was called back. So this will punt with the wind that is back for the first time. Bauer and Jackson back deep, and we're going to have a five yard penalty. And I, that may be intentional because he oh. does have the win. Well, it was definite. I, also, they tried to draw Penn State offside. They would have had a first down. And now, to me, to me, that's a little thing, but that was good football by Penn State uh, defenders. They were not drawn offside. Well, they're marching back five. It'll be fourth down and eight yards to go. But the intent was, as George mentioned, to draw Penn State off the offside and get a cheap first down. Oh, let's get again. This time, Bow and Jackson stand at their own 15-yard line. Good snap. And a good kick. High. Bow taking it to 15. He's got to see him on the outside again to the 30 and across the 30 and out near the 35-yard line. Kevin Bow with a 20-yard punt return. Again, a nice job by Penn State's punt return unit. Putting him in good field position. It's not only the field position, but the last... Two that were 20-yard returns. They just missed going all the way by one man. Now, let's watch this. Now, he's a smart runner. He takes his time, looks for the seam, lets the, the, the uh, kicking team pass him by, looking for a cutback. He's always moving. One thing you've got to like is that the other safety in the twin safety is always throwing a block in there, and that's something that's very important. That's the key block, Stan. First down and 10. Penn State, their own 35. Kenny Jackson. Motion near side. Warner looking, not getting much room. For a 35 out to the 38-yard line. Give him three. Bill Pickell makes the tackle for Rutgers as Frank Burns looks on. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Warner having probably his uh, best day of the season. Well, he's starting to get uh, revved up a little bit. Uh, don't worry about Kurt Warner. He's the least of their worries. But look for them to throw the ball deep over the middle again. Uh, it's a second down situation. They're getting man-to-man -man coverage. Warner with 48 yards, his best individually in a game this year is 49. Second down and seven. Jackson left, Garrity right. High backfield. Blackledge. A lot of time. Over the middle, Joel Cole. 45 and across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Nice delay by Penn State. They pick up nine yards and a first down. Well, they got great protection after the play fake, but I think Todd could have hit any one of three receivers. Watch the little fake here. Now he decides to go short. The Coles coming out of the backfield. Safe pass, makes the first down. And there's the mark of a good quarterback. He knows where those safety valve people are, and he knows where they're going to be and where they can throw to him. Wide left this time is Rocky Washington. This time a slot to the right. Give inside to Coles. Nice running room, and he gets across the 50 into Rutgers territory, down to the 47-yard line. Give him a gain of six. It'll be second down and four as Piquel again makes the tackle. See, when you, start, when you start completing passes, it loosens the linebackers up. It gives the, the offensive lineman a chance to take off and put a, put a good block on the defenders. And a nice trap block by center Mark Battaglia on the play, getting that middle linebacker in there. Second down and four. 
Washington left. Again, the give inside to Warner, but this time not much running room, if any at all. He gets about a yard to the 46-yard line. It'll bring up third down and along to Pickell, again making the tackle, and he has played a very strong game this afternoon. Bill Pickell made the stop. Third down, long two, 9.45 to play in the half. Penn State leading 14 to seven. Coles and Warner behind Blackledge. Washington left in a slot. Warner hit in the backfield and a good defensive play by Dumont. That's Jim Dumont to come in and destroy the play, and that brings up a punting situation. Well, here we got an instance where you can see keying. Now, Dumont, which will be the bottom of the screen, he was keying Warner. As soon as Warner came at him, he penetrated, made contact, and stopped him from making the first down. So that brings up fourth down, and again, Giacomero to punt. Carl Howard and John Cummins back deep. Giacomero looking to get it to dump. Two-yard line, batted back, but in the end zone. A great attempt on the play for Penn State by Stu McMahon. He almost got it back in there. And a nice job by Giacomero. It will go as a 46-yard punt, and Rutgers will get the ball and the touchback at their own 20-yard line. Stan, that's good coaching, though. I mean, he, he knew what he wanted to do, and uh, uh, whoever coaches, especially teams, are doing a fine job. 83,268 here at today's game. You probably can add a couple thousand to that next week when the Big Red comes to town. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Give inside. Bryant Moore, the fullback, gets three to the 23. Mike Garrett, Bryant knifing Moore, yeah. in from defensive end, makes the tackle. Mike It'll be Garrett, second down and seven. There's a little fullback counter. Watch the fullback start one, uh, one way more, cut back, and Garrett closes it off from his defensive end position. That's a nice job to get him behind those blockers and come down the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven. Rutgers really hasn't varied their offensive formation. This is in a pro set now, but one of the very few times that they have been in that pro set. LaPrairie on second and seven. Scrambles. He's hit and dropped on a nice tackle for a loss back at the 20-yard line. Greg Gattuso, left defensive tackle, came in to make the play. It's a loss of three. It'll be third down and ten. And Gattuso saved the day. He would have made the first down. Now watch him. It's a nice move by LaPrairie. They got the rush on. Watch him reverse pivot. Gattuso's on the chase. Gets him on the heel. Puts him down. Kelly got a bit deep and did not have the pursuit angle. So now they force Rutgers to go to a third and long ten. Johnson and Baker slotted to the right. Now Johnson breaks out of it. Or rather Baker goes motion left. Here's the draw play to Smith, and he's going nowhere. Good defensive play along the defensive line by Penn State. No gain, fourth down and 10. Garrett and Pappenroth make the tackle. Well, Garrett blitzed, and he should have had him in the backfield. This is what Joe was talking about. Kale is tackling. He just reached out with his arm, and the ball carrier broke the tackle. Well, once again, it is danger time for Rutgers. Penn State's biggest offense, frankly, has been their punt return game. Jackson near side, bow far side. Robinson, the up man, Bow and Jackson at their own 37. Falconel, or rather Liska, with the wind behind him. Rush on this time, he gets it away. Bow at his 41. Cuts up, 50, into Rutgers territory at the 47-yard line. It'll be a 13-yard return. First down and 10, Penn State. There's a timeout on the action. The score, Penn State 14, Rutgers 7. We'll be back right after this. Better hold it. Penn State starting out in Rutgers territory at the Scarlet Knights 47 yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Blackledge, screen to Warner. Got a blocker. 40, 35, and inside the 35 to the 31 yard line. 16-yard gain and a first down for the Nittany Lions. But once again, Stan, you see the way Rutgers is coming hard on first and second down. A good call. Penn State goes to the screen pass. It'll be off to the left of your screen. He fakes the Warner first, then looks off the defenders. 
dumps it off. The line is out there. Battaglia gives him a good key block, enable him to cut back. Number 73, Heller, or Kur uh, makes the tackle for Rutgers. Cordella, number 79. First down and 10 yards to go. Penn State at the Rutgers 31 yard line. Give inside. Williams, 35, 20, and knocked out of bounds near the 19 yard line. Let's see where they rule really he stepped out of bounds. John Williams really made a nice run. Looked like he was going to lose yardage on the play. When you got ability, I mean, uh, you would say this week we've been working on this. This is all on his own. In fact, he bumps into his own offensive lineman, Heller, 78, has enough speed to turn the corner, tight ropes to sidelines, turns nothing into a good play. Jeff Bruni getting some playing time, number 73. It's a nice gain. Gained eight on the play. It's second down and two. And individual effort. This time, Williams, the lone setback, Warner wing right. Play fake. Blackledge right looking, firing in the end zone. Touchdown, Penn State! Kurt Warner with a touchdown. Well, they ran that from a slot formation. Let's take a look at it. Via to the right of your screen, Warner's in a slot. He's coming out. He runs to the sidelines upfield. He's wide open. The ball is a little thrown behind him. He adjusts to the ball, gets the touchdown. Todd Blackledge's ninth touchdown pass of the season. Massimo Manka to attempt the extra point to up Penn State's lead to 14 points. Manka perfect on the season. 10 out of 10. You can make that 11 out of 11. And Penn State increases their lead. There's a timeout in the action to score. Penn State 21, Rutgers 7. We'll be back right after this. <coughs> With that touchdown reception by Kurt Warner, he now has 89 total yards this afternoon. And with that 89 all-purpose yards, he now is the Penn State record holder, surpassing Lydell Mitchell. So Kurt Warner, the Penn State all-time, all-purpose yardage leader. Manka kicks. Hooper takes at the three. Hit and drop at the 16-yard line. Nice coverage for Penn State by Stu McMahon. Once again, outstanding special team effort by Penn State. Look at this coverage. It's been Stu McMahon coming up there. He's the first man down, makes the tackle. Now, this is a key series of downs for Rutgers. Uh, they have to do something. They've lost all their momentum, or this dang game could turn into a rout. 53-yard touchdown drive in just three plays. Blackledge to Warner, 22-yard touchdown pass Todd's ninth of the season. LaPrairie, flag down, screen pass, hit and drop. It'll be a loss all the way back to the 12-yard line. It'll be a loss of three. There's a flag down on the play. I think they're going to call holding in the, in the backfield, uh, Stan. Well, I would think if that's the case, Penn State would decline it, make it second and 13. It's either second and 13 or first and 17 because it would be half the distance. I think even Frank Burns would decline this penalty. Well, it, Rutgers has to gain, uh, regain their composure now. They're getting a little sloppy. I think Smith, 33 to back, was the, uh, the culprit that was holding. It is declined. Legal use of hands. It'll be second down and 13 yards to go. Rutgers with the win, but deep in their own territory. Second down and 13. And George is absolutely right. Here's the time of the game when you get careless and make a turnover and you get blown out. Tight end Mercer Hedgeman. Haven't heard much from him today other than switching sides. The Prairie with the roll. Got a man open, fires, and it is caught up at the 23 yard line, making the reception Eric Johnson. And the reception is good for 10 yards. It'll be third down and two. Well, this is a nice play. He does a good job. He sprints a little fake to Smith. Now, Hedgeman is in a little seam there, does a curl. Oh, that was Johnson. That was not Hedgeman. Eric Johnson, who made that beautiful leaping catch in the first quarter, and it seems like LaPrairie has been looking for Baker all the time. Johnson's the guy who's been open. Third down and two yards to go. Same motion. Fake. LaPrairie is going to run. Got the first down to the 30, and hit and knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. So the game 
is seven, and it's good for a first down. Jack LaPrairie for the first down. And as George mentioned, he is the leading rusher on this Rutgers team. Well, that was a run play all the way. There was no option on that. They're trying to string Penn State's defense out. They know he's a pretty good runner, and he took it for the first down. They're also using a lot of flood patterns against the Penn State secondary. First down and 10, Rutgers near the 35-yard line. 4.42 to play, first half. Penn State leads 21-7. Here's LaPrairie looking for the home run, and it is well overthrown. Mark Robinson, Dan Biondi on the covers, looking for Baker once again, but it is well overthrown, incomplete, second down and 10. Stan, as coaches go, they, they say this, uh, you never know. He's, he threw the ball a lot better against the wind he sure did. Than, he, than he's doing now with the wind at his back. It is an adjustment having played the first quarter against the wind. Now that ball seems to be sailing on him just a bit. The Prairie against Syracuse, 16 out of 24. The Prairie right now, 8 out of 11, 101 yards, and the touchdown pass, a 65-yarder to Baker. He's having himself a pretty good day. Here's Smith, and nowhere to go. Out to the 37, a gain of a couple for Bryant Moore, the fullback. Brian McCann makes the tackle for Penn State, playing at Hero instead of Hamilton. It'll bring up third down at 8. Kurt Warner, as we mentioned earlier, 3,865 all-purpose yards. That's pass receiving, rushing, punt returning, kickoff returning, and he passed up a pretty fair country back. I was just going to say that. Third down and eight. La Prairie over the middle, incomplete. Intended over the middle for the tight end Mercer Hedgeman. Carmen Antonio on coverage. We've got a flag on the play. It'll be holding against Rutgers. It was a straight was a drop back play. action. Now they're trying, they found a hole over the middle. Now Mash Antonio, young linebacker, does a great job, stretches out with his right hand, knocks the ball down. Carmen Mash Antonio got a lot of playing time last week. He's a sophomore. And the options being explained to Penn State. The holding penalty, obviously, will be declined by Penn State. They would like the football, and they will get it on fourth down and eight. So, you know, the, the, the way Bowles, the amount of uh, chances of returns Bowles getting, he's liable to be the leading, not only a leading ground gainer for all purpose yardage, but get it, getting his hands on the ball the most. He's liable to pass up Warner just today. <laughs> Fun returns alone. Kenny Jackson near side, Bowles far side, waiting the punt from Gary Liska, who has been very active for Rutgers. Low snap, but he makes a nice pickup. Gets off a beautiful punt. Kenny Jackson goes back at his 14-yard line. Not quite to cut up field, needs a block, gets a couple, but only out to the 24-yard line. Give him credit for a 10-yard return Kenny and a great foot by Liska. Kevin Spitzer makes the tackle, and Penn State will take over first down and 10 at their own 24. They have 347 left to go in the second quarter. What do you think Coach Burns is thinking? He said, gee, they got Bow back there. Robinson runs one for 92 yards, and they put Kenny Jackson back there. They just got a lot of talent. A lot of folks hanging around. So Penn State. First down and 10. Skeeter Nichols now in there at the tailback. And Nichols gets a shot. Across the 25 and out near the 26-yard line. A gain of a couple. Second down and eight yards to go. Bill Beschner, defensive right tackle, number 65, making the tackle. The Dumont boys hanging around the football also. You made a good point, George, in the touchdown pass to Warner, and also on some of the other passes, Rutgers definitely playing a run on first down. Tom Blackman today, six out of 11, 101 yards for one touchdown, but he has had three drop. Oh, the snap, the ball's loose. Let's see who's got it. Rutgers has the football. Well, Stan, I saw this one very clearly. The center snapped the ball early. That's the way it looks. Let's see if we can catch it. The ball comes up. Watch the ball come up. Doesn't look like Blackledge is ready. You see, his head was turned off to the right. He was not not ready to receive that ball. And Piquel recovered the fumble. Boy, is he playing some kind of football game. Bill Piquel, the senior on Rutgers. Defensive line, left tackle. And now Rutgers has a chance to tighten it up, just like Maryland did. Last week, near the end of the half, 3.08 to play. They have it at the Penn State 28. LaPrairie rolling. 
cuts up field. He's hit hard, but falls forward inside the 25 near the 24-yard line. What a shot by Dave Ofer, who was chasing him. Give him a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. This kid, LaPrairie, is 6'2", 195, a sophomore. He's tough. Well, last week, Penn State's pursuit from the inside was not great. If you stretch the play out, and that's what he's doing. He's running wide, hoping to get his seam and cut back up to the inside. Last week, Rutgers turned it over four times. They have not done that today. Second and eight from the 25. Smith got a hold of the 20 and inside the 20 near the 19-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Ken Kelly made the tackle. Time running at 2.20 to play in the half. Penn State leads at 21-7. And the Scarlet Knights have a chance to get on the scoreboard before the half. And remember, their field goal kicker, Falsinelli, is a good one. Third down, two yards to go. Rutgers has to get inside the 18-yard line for a first down. LaPrairie rolling, wants to throw, it is caught! Baker, after the tip of the flag comes in late, Biondi had tipped the ball up in the air, but Baker stayed with it, made the reception for a first down, and a flag on the play. I think they're gonna call Robinson for a late hit. Now watch this. He got a lot of pressure, now the ball was well played by Robinson, it was tipped up, Baker kept his eyes on the ball, adjusted to it, now here comes the late hit. Absolutely. Radisic made the tackle, but Robinson came in late, and that'll move the ball just outside the five-yard line. And a lot of time, 153. And you talk about the touchdown pass to Baker, George. He beat Dan Biondi, but one of the key factors there is that Andrew Baker is about 6'2 and a half, and Dan Biondi's 5'9. There's another case where Biondi well, is short. Well, definitely, that's, that's part of their strategy, but uh, this is a situation where Penn State needs for their defense to stiffen and, and just kind of shut them down. First down and goal just outside the five. Here's LaPrairie carrying into the backfield and dropped for a loss at the 12-yard line. Mark Robinson in a safety blitz forced the action. They have not been able to come up with any big plays on defense so far. This is their biggest weakness in the defense so far. It's a rollout type of action. Robinson came up, as you said, from a safety blitz, held him long enough to have the pursuit put him down. And Roger Jackson was also coming. The question is, who was minding the score back there? You'll find out on this play because they'll throw. Second down and goal to goal from the 12-yard line. Baker motion far side. LaFrairie to throw. Looking in the flat, it is caught at the five-yard line. And the tackle by Roger Jackson to Andrew Baker. So the gain is seven. They're back where they started. Third down and goal just outside the five. And Rutgers is going to use one of their timeouts. So they get the loss back on the safety blitz. It'll be third down and goal from the five. All right, Coach Paterno, what would you call here if you're Frank Burns? Well, I think they'll throw the ball because uh, they run one. They might, you know, lose an opportunity to get anything. But uh, I, I'm very concerned about Penn State in the secondary. I mean, this is a situation. We knew they were going to throw up there from up here. They knew they were going to throw, and they find Baker. They get a nice gain, a gain to put him in scoring position. You got to do a lot better than that against the great team. We talk about the secondary. George, let's involve the linebackers here, too. Uh, uh, is there a problem there? Well, it seems to me the linebackers are, ho are, are taking the fake and holding him a little too long, allowing the, uh, the wide receivers to get a little too much running room. But the... Uh, it's just, I think the secondary is just playing just a little too loose and giving uh, the receivers too much of a cushion. All right. Jack LaPrairie getting instruction from Frank Burns. You watch Scott Radizek come back in the defensive huddle for Penn State. So here it is. 50 seconds to play in the first half. Rutgers, third down and goal, just outside the Penn State five-yard line. Look at the team. 21-7. Let's see if they come again. Nope. Reverse. Baker. Five, two, one. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Rutgers. But once again, I think, you know, the defense should have been looking for something. Now, this is Baker. It's a well-executed reverse. He comes from his flank position. They fake off to Smith on the inside. Now, somebody should stay home for this. 
They have to have somebody in a, a contain to stay home. He gets around the corner and gets the touchdown. Looked like John Garrett perhaps was the man uh, who was uh, caught a bit out of position. Or rather Mike Garrett, I'm sorry. So the touchdown by Andrew Baker, a five yard run, actually a Statue of Liberty almost, inside reverse. Falcinelli will try to tack on the extra point and bring Rutgers within a touchdown. Kick is up. Kick is good. And Rutgers, scoring with just 42 seconds to play in the half, has drawn within seven. And it came after the fumbled center snap exchange with Todd Blackledge and Mark Battaglia at the 24-yard line. A 24-yard drive. And it came on third and goal. Well, you talk about momentum going in at halftime. Here's a Rutgers team that was hammered by Syracuse, 31 to 8. They turned it over four times, did not score a touchdown, had very little offense whatsoever, gave up 380 yards total offense to Syracuse, and Penn State finds themselves up by just a touchdown. Well, you have to give them credit and give the coaching uh, staff credit. They, they got an opportunity, and they made the best of it. I don't know whether there's anybody among the 83,000 plus who at this point George thinks that Penn State is necessarily in danger of losing this football game but going back to our opening comments Joe Paterno wanted this team to play well in all areas and especially on defense the defense has not been sharp now that's a mental error when you get down in that situation like that somebody has to stay home just looking for that particular play especially when it's first and goal at the five you shoot the safety, tackle the man for a seven-yard loss. So you make the big defensive play, then you give it right back up again. That's not good football. All right, let's see if Falcinelli decides to squib this thing. Yeah, he'll kick it away, and it's a line driver out of the end zone with the win. And so Penn State will take over first down and 10 at their own 20 with 42 seconds to play in the first half. And if we hear some or feel some vibration in Beaver Stadium, it will be emanating from the Penn State locker room at halftime. I think we will see that second offensive line in there in the second half. He's done so well. well. Let's see if Penn State decides to eat it or go for something. Warner, the slot left, that gives to John Williams, who gets three out to the 23-yard line. Let's see if they line up without a huddle. If they don't, they're going to take it in at halftime. If they do, they're going to try to get one off. They're going back to the huddle, so I think we can assume that that indeed will be the last offensive play of the first half because the referee started the clock with 24 seconds to go in the first half. Well, they had two, two timeouts left also, so they're just they're kind of saying, let's get into the uh, locker room, regroup, and uh, get organized. They do not have to run a play, and they will not run a play. The crowd doesn't much care for that. And they're rather vociferous about it. We have come to the end of the first half. The score, Penn State 21, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. The option in the second half belonged to Rutgers. You remember Penn State won the opening toss and elected to defend the goal to get the win. So Rutgers has elected to receive to start the second half. Rutgers elected to receive to start the second half and Manka kicking off for Penn State and this one will go nine yards deep in the end zone and Smith will stay right there so they'll take it first down and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Checking those first half statistics teams were even in first downs with seven total yardage from scrimmage Rutgers 194 Penn State 177. The only thing that kept Penn State in the football game, you don't see it there, but Penn State had 166 yards on return yardage. Penn State turned it over twice. Rutgers did not turn it over at all, and that has them in the football game. Down a touchdown at 21-14. Tailback Smith. That's some room, but the defense stacked it up around the 23-yard line. Scott Radisick and Harry Hamilton coming in to make the tackle. It'll be a gain of three and second down and seven yards to go. Individually, Todd Blackledge, six out of 11, one touchdown. 
102 yards. Jack LaPrairie, 9 out of 14, 118 yards and one touchdown. That a 65-yard bomb to Baker. Second down and seven yards to go. Rutgers at their own 23, trailing by seven. Baker in motion. Johnson split wide left. Here's the rollout. Looking, firing. Johnson is wide open at the 37-yard line. And that'll be good for a Rutgers first down. A gain of 14 and a first down. Well, this is the same play that they heard Penn State with in the first half. They take the flanker, put a man in motion. We'll roll out action out of flanker. He's going to go down and curl in about 10 yards, wide open. No one to cover. The linebackers are, are flowing with the quarterback instead of dropping off and getting some undercover. Third reception of the day for Eric Johnson. Baker's been the big man with four touchdowns, uh, four receptions for a touchdown, 87 yards total. But Johnson has been open most of the game. First and 10 Rutgers, their own 37 yard line. They move against the wind in the third quarter. Here's the give off inside to Bryant Moore. He finds running room all the way out to the 43 of And Penn State recovers the football. You know, but let, let's take a look at this. This is a a good job of containing. Catuzo forces the play a little deep. The ball's handed off to Moore. Pavanrod, 33. He puts the hit on him. The ball is John loose. First turnover today for Rutgers. But I noticed on that defensive series, Walter Ashley was not in the ball game. Harry Hamilton actually stripped the ball, just took it right away from him. So Penn State, forcing their first turnover of the day, has a first and 10 at the Rutgers 43. Kurt Warner tries to get outside and nothing doing, brother. Good defensive pursuit. Carl Howard, the cornerback, came up. Lionel Washington, 99, the defensive end, turned it in. And good defense by Rutgers. Well, that was a counter play. He's supposed to go over the right guard. And McGinnis, number 54, just fell down flat on his face. Missed his block. Forcing Warner to go outside so the corner could come up and make the tackle. Warner now, 47 yards rushing on 11 carries. There you see Todd Blackledge's stats. Second down and 10, Penn State. Motion near side, Jackson. Blackledge, screen, Williams, 35, 30, outside, 25, makes him a big size, 20, 15. He's down to the 10 yard line. What a great run by John Williams. Unbelievable. Well, it's a great call and a great run. Watch how Jonathan Williams uses his blockers. Now they use Warner as a decoy here. They fake it off to Warner. Todd looks off the defense, here's the screen, formed out pretty good. McGinnis got out in front, but he's running on his own now. This is beautiful running. When he gets out there, he can go at any time. Great running by Jonathan Lee. They spot the football inside the 12-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Jackson right, Garrity left. Warner. To the 10 yard line, a gain of a couple. It'll be second and eight. Jeff Cordilla, the middle guard, 79, made the tackle. And as you said many times today, George, Rutgers playing the run on first down. But you know, when you got a really good, strong offensive line, even though they play the run, you should be able to create some cracks in there for your backs to get in. It is so important, imperative, that Penn State score a touchdown here. After getting the turnover, double tight end, Jackson split. Crossing tight end. Blackledge looking in the end zone, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, one of them, Kirk Bowman, incomplete down the cross pattern. Incomplete third down and eight for the first down. But once again, it was a breakdown on the offensive line. Number 78, Heller, let his man get to the inside, forced Blackledge to throw early. Penn State crossed both ends, and Walter was wide open. And now it is third down and eight. Garrity comes in with a play. This time a single tight end. McCloskey to the left. And Penn State will go with a slot. Jackson outside. Garrity inside. Jackson now breaks the slot and comes back to the inside. Blackledge looking, firing. Touchdown, Penn State. Greg Garrity, a flag on the play. It'll probably be interference against Rutgers. The touchdown will stand. But once again, when he gets his hands on the ball, this is a clutch throw, clutch catch. Straight drop back from a slot formation. Garrity coming right to left from his flanker position. Anything you throw near him, he catches. 
It was interference on Rutgers, obviously declined, and that ball had to be right where it was, one inch either side. It would have been incomplete. Todd Blackwood, his second touchdown pass of the day, 10th on the year, Penn State looking to up their lead to 14. Massimo Manka. Kick is good. Uh, there's a penalty rough in the kicker. It'll be tacked on on the kickoff. Manka's kick was good, 28-14. Personal foul. Absolutely. It'll be assessed on the kickoff. Penn State takes the extra point. So Penn State, after the fumble recovery, moves 43 yards. The big play, a screen by Jonathan Williams, and a great run down of the 12, the touchdown pass. A 10-yarder to Greg Garrity. That is Blackledge's 10th touchdown pass of the year, second of the day. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 28, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. Actually, this type of a penalty doesn't hurt the team that penalizes as much as you think because it puts the kicker in a bind. If he kicks into the end zone, and comes out to the 20 anyhow, and if he starts trying to go short, sometimes he uh, miscalculates and they get a short kick in return tonight. Well, in the opening game, or rather last week against, uh, against Maryland, uh, the same thing occurred, and I suggested they squib, and they did. Let's see what they do now. I think they will again. Deep men are up at the five yard line as opposed to being on the goal line, so obviously they anticipate the squib also. Keeps it straight up in the air. Someone's got to catch it. Fair catch called for and taken at the 19 yard line. And for those who do not know, yes, you may call for a fair catch on a kickoff. Well, no, that's exactly what I, I was talking about. Last week we debated a little bit. They squibbed it and it worked out okay. Today they try to pop it short and, and, it, and it backfired on it. Clement Udovich, who probably hasn't touched a ball since he was in the seventh grade, he is the uh, starting left guard, call for the fair catch. I bet you the first guard will make a fair catch this year. That's right. We'll send that to the NCAA for statistics. Penn State driving 43 yards and four plays for the touchdown. Now Rutgers down 14, first down and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Inside to Smith, across the 20 and out to the 23. And a nice cutback run by freshman tailback Al Smith. The gain of four. It'll be second down and six yards to go. By the way, Smith in the first half, 30 yards rushing, but only on four carries, so an average of seven and a half yards. Second down, six, Rutgers, their own 23, trailing 28-14. Early third quarter. La Prairie. Passing. Caught by Eric Johnson at the 37-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for the Scarlet Knights. And then Eric Johnson has been open all day long. Roger Jackson finally made the tackle. Well, they hit the same area. It's a little different. This time it's straight drop back, not play action. But they just don't get, they're not getting a good rush on the pass on straight back. Petuso comes in late, jumps. There's no one to cover. Another reception for Johnson. Sefter, Steve Sefter, in there at linebacker. Came on the blitz, but not in time. It was first down and 10 yards to go Rutgers. Baker motion. Rush on hit. He gets it away and is caught. Al Smith outside the 45 and out near midfield. And what a job by Jock LaPrairie to get that ball away. The gain is for 12 and a first down at the 49 yard line. Well, let's take a look at this because Watch LaPrairie. Now, everybody almost pulls up, and we almost had a repeat of last week when Maryland got a touchdown. The secondary stopped for a second. I got the ball out there to Smith. Fortunately, somebody wasn't sleeping. Puzz, number 55, slows him down. They hold him to a good game. First down and 10 Rutgers, their own 49-yard line. Prairie. Looking deep, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted. Flag on the play. Harry Hamilton and Dan Biondi on coverage almost intercepted the ball short, but again, there's a flag in the Rutgers backfield. Holding, Rutgers, they'll take that, make it first down and 20 yards to go. You know, Stan, 
uh, when you blitz a linebacker, it can do you more harm than good unless he causes some trouble. And if he gets picked up and doesn't make enough penetration to force the pass and throw quick, that means he's given up his undercover and you can get hurt, hurt worse than you would if he was just playing it normal. And that's what's happened. Now, Sefta blitzed twice. He was picked up. There was no undercover, and they completed the pass. Makes you wonder, though, about what LaPrairie's looking at because it, somebody's got to be open shorter than Baker. Well, I think they, they, they're relying on trying to hit that bomb, get it all back on one throw. Again, they threw it in the area of Biondi uh, that time. Again, Baker against Biondi, but uh, Penn State gave Biondi a little help. Rutgers really is not driven on Penn State. The one drive was 24 yards after a fumble recovery. The other, a 65-yard touchdown pass. First down, 20 yards to go. Rutgers, their own 39-yard line. Here's Smith, the tailback, hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss back near the 38-yard line. Steve Scepter this time got across the line of scrimmage and hit Smith to make the drop. Well, let's watch. This is just a, 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 a draw play to the tailback. Hines is in there, penetrates. Seth that comes in from his left linebacker spot, makes the tackle. Hines came in and really destroyed the block of Clement Udovich, who was the trapping guard on the play. And of course, Hines smelled the trap, stuffed up the hole, and that allowed Scepter to come in. Second down and 20. LaPrairie over the middle. It is intercepted by Penn State. Mark Robinson to the outside. Got a blocker. 40, 35, and runs out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Mark Robinson. Picking off the pass and Penn State will have it at the 35 yard line. We you understand, know, we talked about this in half. This is the first big play Penn State's made on defense in the, in the first three games. Now Robinson laid back, smelled it, come up the middle, and he's got much better speed than people realize. He almost turns the corner and takes this one in. He's a lot faster with two shoes on than one. You remember last year when he ran all the way down the field. First down and 10, Penn State with a slot to the left side. John Williams behind Blackman. Whistle, too much time. Too much time. That'll cost them five, and they will go back. Well, we should mention to the fans, then that they'd have the 25-second clocks up now in college football, and, uh, you know, it's something for the, the uh, quarterbacks to get used to uh, to effectively uh, use as a you know a helping hand dead ball illegal motion which means the motion came before penalty against Penn State. the snap procedure. so it'll be first down and 15 the ball at the Rutgers 40 here's a chance George for Penn State to deliver that knockout punch well they've let him off the ropes about three times so far same formation on first and 15. Same play. Williams, the 30, the 25 has got the first down and out of bounds at the 23 yard line. John Williams with a 17 yard run and a Penn State first down. Stan, I don't know the rhyme or reason of it. This is the same play. Williams is lined up as a fullback in a double wing formation. Gary puts a great block on number 47, Corbin. Now, Last week against Maryland, they come out in the second half, ran out about four times in a row for big yardage. Good seal block by Ron Heller and a good seal block by Lou Bartek. Again, the slot formation, receivers split either side. Williams to the other side, cuts up field inside the 20 and down to the 17 yard line. A gain of six, it'll be second down. Williams to the other side, cuts up field inside the 20 and down to the 17 yard line. A gain of six, it'll be second down and four yards to go. And the reason why that can be effective when you put a, a slot, which is really a double wing formation, you spread the linebackers out. They have to cover those wide people. And if a back can find a crease right here, as he does, Utica is chasing him, uh, 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 yes he is. And he turns up and makes about five yards. Second down and four. Slot to the left. They're flip-flopping. Slot left, slot right, now slot left. Williams, left side. Flags down all over the place. Williams has the first down, but I think they'll bring this one back. Joe Corbin, the right corner, came up to make the tackle, but this one may be coming back here. Flags all over the place. Holding Penn State. Oh, they bring it back. That'll be 10. Well, once again, as you said, with a, you know, are they going to go in for the kill? And they, they've let him off the ropes three times before this. So instead of a first down and 10, 
at the 12 yard line. It'll come back to the 27 yard line. They'll make it the 24 yard line. So it'll be second down and 11 yards to go for the first. But John Williams carried the ball three times in a row. And Williams needs just four yards for 1,000 yard rushing in his career. He would then become the 17th Penn State running back to gain 1,000 yards in a career. Second down and 11, Penn State at the Rutgers, 24. Blackley in the flat. It is caught out of the flat and down to the 11 yard line and good for a first down. Greg Garrity with another reception and he keeps that, let's see, we gotta keep track. 32 out of his 33 receptions have been for first down. Well, that time, they same formation, single coverage on Garrity. He audibleized it, bango, and it went there, quick first down. Corbin again on the tackle, but not before. Penn State picks up 13 and a first down. It is first down and 10 at the 11, so they can get the first down without the touchdown. Staying with the slot. Williams to the eight yard line, a gain of three, second down and seven. Now Williams has 999 yards career rushing. George, I wanna ask you, Penn State on offense this third quarter has run out of that slot continually. What did Penn State find in the Rutgers defense that makes them line up in that slot? Well, Rutgers is playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage and when you, you go into a slot formation, which is really a double wing, you only got one man deep in the backfield, which is Williams. You're spreading them out and forcing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage but also you can get out wide because those men will run the defenders off. Now they go to the pro set. Second down and seven. Blackley's looking, firing McCloskey. Touchdown, Penn State! Todd Blackley to Mike McCloskey. An eight-yard touchdown pass, and Penn State scores again. Uh, this is a great throw, really. It's a short throw, but it's a great throw. Straight drop back. McCloskey runs for the corner of the end zone. The ball had to be in front of him because he was closely defended. Makes the reception, goes in for the touchdown. Blackledge's third touchdown pass of the day. It gives him 11 on the season, 30 in his career, and he's now only seven behind John Huffnagel for the all-time Penn State touchdown pass leader. Ball's down, kick is up, and it is good. So, with the touchdown to McCloskey, there's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 35, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. I want to correct myself. I said that Todd Blackledge was seven behind John Huffnagel. He is behind Chuck Fusina. Chuck Fusina, the Penn State leader with 37 TD passes. Massimo Manka kicking deep to Smith. Five yards, he'll stay there. He thought about it, but he's a freshman. And his elders said, stay where you are. So Rutgers will take it first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. And the scoreboard is out again. I'll tell you with the score we've seen up here, maybe they don't have the proper electrical power to run the thing. Maybe after a certain amount of numbers, the weight of the numbers causes it short. Well, we don't, we, there's about seven minutes left to go at 8.01 in the third quarter, Penn State. 40 yards after the interception by Mark Robinson. Seven plays it took them. Actually, they started on the 35. The five-yard penalty moved them back to the 40, so uh, we'll call that a 35-yard drive. Even though the offense put the ball in the end zone, the most significant factor of that was that the defense made a big play, a turnover, an interception. This is what Penn State historically was known for. Their defense would turn the, the whole game around and make big plays get the ball in scoring position for the offense. They have not done that, had not done that so far this year. You cannot be a great football team if your defense does not perform well and set up the offense. If that were true, the San Diego Chargers would have won 10 Super Bowls by You're now. absolutely correct, Dan. The defense has to make some big plays in the ball game. Talking about Todd Blackledge's touchdown passes, 11 this year in uh, less than three games. The all-time single season record 15 touchdown passes in a single season. That is held by Chuck Fusina, set in 1977. The Prairie giving up on the draw and a loss on the play, one yard loss. Joe Hines came in to take care of Al Smith. Steve Scepter in to clean up. It's a loss of one. 
second down and 11. You know, Joe Hines, the defensive tackle for Penn State, number 52, has the chance to be a great one. He's got great strength. He just has to find the ball. Once he makes penetration, uh, a little bit more pursuit, and I think he's going to be a good one. And we notice Chris Sidnor is now in left corner in place of Dan Biondi. Second and 11. La Prairie in trouble. Hit. Gets away. Hit again. And gets back to near the 20-yard line. That's some tough running. Radisic finally brought him down. But La Prairie is a tough kid. Took some shots. And once again, we're going to get a good example of reaching. Now, we see they come on a corner blitz by Sinon out. Right here, seven, Gattuso reaches. Sefter reaches. He breaks both those tackles. You've got to get your helmet right into those numbers. Even when they brought him down, La Prairie still kept fighting forward. It is third down. A little more than 10 yards to go for the first down. Blitz on. He's hit. He gets it away. The pass complete to Hooper. He's hit and he fumbles out of bounds. The gain will just be just one yard. It'll be fourth down to nine. Scott Radisick made the tackle. All right, but let's watch this. This is what I'm talking about, intensity. Now watch them come this time. But Prayer knows he's been hit. Hines gets to him right here. Almost a super play by Puzz. And, just, and, and trying to take the defense down and make the tackle at the same time. Let's get a kick. Gets up a beauty. Kevin Ball all the way back at his 28-yard line. Looks for the left sideline. Got a hole to the 40, 45, and across the 45 to the 47-yard line. So Kevin Bow again with a nice return. This one of 19 yards. Kevin Spitzer made the tackle, and Penn State will take over first down and 10 at their own 47-yard line. About seven minutes to play third quarter. Again, the scoreboard clock is out. Second string offensive line is in intact. Joe Paterno playing an awful lot of people. Again, they line up in that slot. Here's the give to Joel Coles. He's got big running room, 45, down to the 42-yard line. Joel Coles with an 11-yard gain and a Penn State first down. Now, this is just straight up the middle. That's zone blocking, power running. So it's a first down. Kevin Bow, who hasn't played much in scrimmage, comes wide left. The backfield, Coles and Skeeter Nichols in the eye. Blackman looking, firing deep for Bow. It is incomplete. Good defensive coverage. Carl, uh, pardon me, Carl Howard and John Zelenke and Bill Houston on the coverage. Good defensive play by Rutgers. And coverage incomplete, second and ten. Here come the Nittany Lions, second and ten. Rocky Washington split wide right. Kevin Bow wide left. The eye backs Coles and Nichols. Nichols looking for a hole and does not find one. No gain. Superb defensive play by linebacker Keith Wetzel, who filled the hole, number 92. Very nice. Good defensive play. So it's third down. About nine yards to go for the first down. Now the clock working again. Six minutes to play, third quarter. Penn State leading by 21 points, 35-14. Might see that screen pass again, Stan. It's been so effective. Washington left, bow right. Blackledge over the middle, and it is incomplete. A flag down. We may have illegal contact on the part of the defense. Pass intended. For Rocky Washington, a bit low for him. I think they're going to call interference on Corbin for shoving from behind. Washington tried to make his cut on the slant across the middle, but he shoved him off course, and you can't do that. Keep our eyes on the official, and you're right. The second string offensive line, Bruni, Short, Hayden, Lau, Wilson. Uh, it's going to be a defensive holding call. And that will give Penn State a first down at the 30-yard line. About a half yard more than they needed. Remember, in college ball, the defensive holding is not an automatic first down as it is in the pros. 
That was defensive holding called on a line of scrimmage by the, the back judge official in the secondary, which is, you know, he's the one that threw the flag. Got better eyes than I do. <laughs> the line of scrimmage was the 40 yard line. The flag dropped at about the 21. Well, the beef here is that the, the clock started. It should not have, even though there was a penalty, there was an incompletion. So here's Penn State, first down and 10 yards to go at the Rutgers 30. Slot right. Blackledge to bow, makes a move to the 20, inside the 20, and that'll be good for another Penn State first down. Carl Howard, the quarterback, and Bob Dumont, left defensive end, dropping off in pass coverage, make the tackle, but it's a gain of 10 and a first down. What I like about this is that Blackledge is reading it. There's single coverage out there, and very loosely on bow. He audibleizes, he just zips it out there. The pass is for about seven, but you get it, uh, the ball to a back like that, he can take it all away. Bow has the moves. Nichols, slot right, actually a wing right, let's call it. Here's a gift to Coles. He's got a hole, but it closes quickly, and he gets to the 17-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Nice defensive play by Randy Hannes, the middle guard who filled the hole. And the official calling a personal foul on Penn State. Looks like a dead ball foul, so that'll move it back from the 17. It'll cost Penn State to down if indeed it was a dead ball foul. Dead ball foul, so that means it'll be second down and 22. And they lose the down. That's the important thing. You'd rather have first and 25. Well, there was a bit of a scuffle on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Didn't uh, catch who it was, but obviously initiated by Penn State. Second down, 22. Penn State at the Rutgers 32. Now they got single coverage up up to the up on Washington now. Let's see if they go to. There's a delay draw. And they give off inside to the 29-yard line. Again, it is Wetzel on the tackle trying to catch Rutgers in a pass defense. Rutgers filled well. John Williams will pick up three and make a third down and that, 19 yards that to puts go. Williams over the thousand. That's it. That. Yep. 1,002 yards career rushing for Jonathan Williams. He becomes the 17th Penn State player to rush for over 1,000 yards in his career. So hats off to John Williams, who has done some superb running today, especially after he's caught the football. Now third and 19, they'll break out of that wing and go to a slot. Washington, the slot man, bow to the right. Now Washington coming in motion to the far side. Blackledge. Looking over the middle, caught by Kevin Bauer at the 15. Makes a move outside and can't quite get there. He was looking to make the move for the first down. The gain is down to the 15 to be fourth down and five yards to go for the first down. Well, uh, Blackledge slipped as he takes the ball from the center. And that threw the timing off just a little bit. Now Bow coming right to left from a flanker position. is wide open. He tries to make a cut to the outside here. Trying to get the first down, but he failed. All right, Massimo Manka will attempt a 33-yard field goal. He is perfect on the season thus far. Kick is up. It's long enough, and it is no good. Massimo Manka misses his first field goal off to the right side, his first placement of any kind, and so the score remains at 35 to 14, 308 to play third quarter. Well, nobody's perfect. I went off to the right a little bit. I thought you were. <laughs> All right, Manka misses uh, his first placement, as we said, of any kind this season. Kevin Bow on that reception, looking to make that move to get the first down. Just couldn't quite get to the outside. One block short. Rutgers with the wind in their face, which has died down some. The parry to Hooper in the flat. 25 30, knocked out of bounds with a 32-yard line, a 12-yard gain, and a first down. Screen pass to Dwayne Hooper, Radisic, and Roger Jackson on the hit. Well, this is well executed. The press dropped drop straight back. Now, Hooper came out of the backfield, and he pulls up, waiting for his offensive lineman 
to pull out, get in front of him, and he runs tough, makes a good run out of this, and Jackson comes up and makes the tag. First and 10, Rutgers. Moore, the fullback, he gets one out to the 33-yard line, second and nine. Greg Gattuso making the tackle. Steve Scepter also cleaning up. And we have seen Joe Paterno in the second half primarily going with his backup linebackers, Alexander, Paz, and Scepter. LaPrairie, 14 out of 21, and he has the one touchdown pass. Second and nine. Prairie over the middle, wide open, and it's Johnson again, and he's got the football at the Penn State 46 for a first down. Eric Johnson makes the catch. Dave Papenroth brings him down. Well, this is the same play that we've uh, they've repeated over and over again. Baker's in motion now. As he sprints, the linebacker is coming up and leaving the undercover where Johnson is, is making the reception. Now, they could go to man-to-man -to -man on that if they want to make a changeup. But, you know, Walter Lee Ashley has not played in the football game it's about the middle of the first, uh, second quarter. And we have no report of uh, any injury to Walker Lee Ashley of any kind. First and 10, Rutgers at the Penn State 46. LaPrairie hit and finally brought down. No, he gets away. He's hit again and he's brought down. Alexander finally knocked him down, but Radisic had him for what appeared to be a five yard loss. Well, Nobody they, else had him. They're going to rule him down, however, well, at the Penn State 40. I, I, I think that's a bad call. He was not down, and that's sloppy tackling. Now, Radisic better learn how to tackle if he wants to play in this league. Now, he's got a chance to really finish him off, and he just wrapped his arm around him. Now, he might have heard a whistle, and if he did, I apologize. Well, I suppose the combination of really tough running by LaPrairie and sloppy tackling by Penn State. Here's the reverse. Baker, 45, 40, 35, bubbles the football, and Penn State recovers. Andrew Baker on the reverse. Got some gray yardage, but he was hit, dropped the ball. Harry Hamilton knocked him loose of the football, and Rodgers Alexander, number 95, made the recovery. That's the breaks of the game, but that's poor defense. Now, this is the same reverse that they scored the touchdown with in the end of the, the second quarter. Now, there's nobody there at all. You have to have a defensive contained man to just sit and wait for stuff like that coming back. And that is the second time that Harry Hamilton has forced a fumble. And that's a big play in the Nebraska's repertoire, those end well, around. End around, sure. Here's the give off. Kurt Warner gets maybe one out to the 34-yard line. Williams and Warner back in there, although they are operating behind that second offensive line unit. Pickell and Wetzel made the tackle. But you've got Garrity and Kenny Jackson back in the game along with Warner and Williams. Before that, we had seen Joel Coles and Skeeter Nichols with Rocky Washington bow the wide receiver. Second down, nine yards to go. Garrity right, Jackson left. Blackledge over the middle of McCloskey. He's got it at the 36-yard line. A gain of two. Make it to 37. A gain of three. It'll be third down. Well, they just take that big tight end, and he goes down about five or six yards and turns around. He's six, six and a half. But Todd didn't see to the top of the screen, off to his left, Kenny Jackson running free on a post pattern. Kenny Jackson has been relatively quiet here this afternoon. Third down. Five yards to go for the first. Play fake. Blackledge looking and throwing. Kenny Jackson has the reception for a first down at the Rutgers 49-yard line. Blackledge to Jackson as time runs out in the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Penn State 35, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. End of third quarter. There was no further scoring, and the third quarter ended with a score, Penn State 35, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. Penn State, first down, 10 yards to go, the Rutgers 49-yard line, first down, and the first play of the fourth quarter. Blackledge 
Looking for the home run ball. Garrity is open, and it is intercepted by Rutgers. The ball was tipped up in the air, and it is intercepted by Bill Houston after the tip. Blackledge's first interception of the day, his fourth of the season. Well, he forced that ball a little bit. I don't know if we have it on a replay, but once again, uh, I keep going to Jackson. He was wide open again, and actually they uh, wrecked his guess right. They had a double coverage on Garrity. Let's see if we can see this. The ball hangs a little bit where Garrity, as he split the double coverage, tried to come back to it. If it was a, the ball was in front of him, he might have might have been able to make the reception. And again, Black was throwing against the wind in the fourth quarter because Garrity did have a couple of yard lead on his man, had to come back to the ball. All right, Rutgers back up at their own one yard line, first down and ten. Cooper, right tackle hit and drop for perhaps a half yard gain. It'll be second down for Rutgers, and nine yards to go. Papenroth coming in to make the tackle for Penn State. That's not exactly the, the greatest place in the world to make an interception on your own one yard line. That, that's that's a better than a, a good kick by the offense. Second and well, let's call it nine. Rutgers just outside their own one yard line. The Prairie throwing deep and it is almost intercepted. Chris Sidnor. Had the ball go through his hands, but he had good coverage on his man, playing left corner in place of Dan Biondi. That's the whole point of his stand. He had excellent position. He was in, in front of him to the inside, running stripe for stripe. Now, Sidner might be one of the fastest, if not the fastest man on the squad. Sidner, a sophomore, 6'1", 178 pounds from Rosemont. That'll bring up third down and a long nine yards to go for the first down. Just underway in the fourth quarter, Penn State leads it 35-14. Third down. Nine for the first down. He's rolling. Pass out in the flat. Incomplete. Intended on the far side for Andrew Baker. Sidner over there again. It is incomplete. And now, Lisco will be forced to punt from his own end zone. I think they'll go for the block in this particular situation. He hasn't got any room. He can't step out of the end zone, as you know. Be two points. So I think Penn State will pressure him and put on the block this time. Nope. Bow. Back deep. Coming up on the football, Harry Hamilton. The 38 to 35 spins away. Gets inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. Harry Hamilton took his licks. Penn State will be in tremendous shape when they take the football. First down and 10. They will spot the ball just inside the Rutgers 35 yard line. If you listen to the ball game on radio, and John Grant was a bit tired. He's got a son who is uh, eight days old today, and John was telling me that uh, young fellow likes to cry uh, just a bit when the sun goes down. First down and 10 yards to go. Penn State, Rutgers 34-yard line. Pitch wide, Tony Mumford looks for a hole, finds one, gets inside the 30 and down to the 28-yard line. Nice run by Tony Mumford, a six-yard gain. Second and four, Tony Sagnella makes the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Penn State has certainly played much better in the second half than they did in the first. Score at halftime was 21-14 Penn State. Rutgers has been held off the board and really haven't made a serious threat. Second and four Penn State. Cole to the 25-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be third and one. Hannes and Sagnella makes the tackle. And again, the second group offensive line stands short. Hayden, Jerome Wilson in there for Penn State, and now Rocky Washington comes crowding in with a play. Yeah, and that's always been part of Penn State's philosophy, Joe Paterno's philosophy. Keep coming at him, and by the, the third, middle of third quarter, you start, you'll start getting tired, and then that's when you can break the game up. Washington out. Dean Demidio, the freshman, in a double tight end with Bowman. Third and one, Mufford got the first down near the 23 yard line. Jim Dumont made the tackle, but Mumford picks up a pair, and that gives Penn State a first down. And George, not only would Joe Paterno like to score here, I think he would he would like to grind it in. That's exactly right. He, uh, and uh, again, this second string line, which has been coming in in the second half, they come in the middle about oh, uh, third into the third quarter, is very impressive. They seem to have a better takeoff. 
and uh, provide more running room for the back. The Rutgers, which is their prerogative, asked for the measurement, but I don't think there's much doubt about this one. First down by more than half a yard, so it'll be first down. Penn State at the Rutgers 23-yard line. 12-44 to play in the game. Penn State leads it 35-14. Garrity left, Jackson right. Coles got a hole outside, inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Thought he might have had a bit of room outside, but he went inside. Dumont makes the tackle, but nevertheless, it is a six-yard game. Now let's see if we can watch the block by sophomore tackle to the right of the screen, uh, short. Right there, he gets the key block, and Avalon Coles to get upfield important for the fans to know that to make a good block you do not have to knock the man into the fourth roll. Just seal him off. That's all they're supposed to do there. Second down. Four yards to go. Penn State. Mumford inside the 15 into the 14 yard line. And he's very close to the first down. They may ask for the measurement. I think he's a little bit short. He is a bit short. About a half a yard. That'll bring Third down and less than a yard to go for that first down. Sagnella again on the tackle along with Bob Dumont. Stan, and I think if I'm, my memory is correct, that almost every time at this second string unit, offensive unit, has gotten to a short shot yardage situation, they've been able to make it. They may have been able to make the first down running the ball. They've gone to that double tight air, and then they bring in Demidio as the second tight end along with Bowman. They're a bit short, about six inches, give or take a quarter. That'll bring up third down and inches for the first down. Next week, the Big Red. And they avenged a loss last year when they lost to Iowa and blew them out 42 to 7 in their opening game. And they, as of today, ranked third in the country. pass in this third down, George, because maybe they could go for it on fourth down anyway with it. Well, you know. As we said before, I think he'd like to grind it out. I don't think he'd run it up on Frank Burns, but he got it. There it is. Blackledge looking in the end zone. Incomplete. It was right right behind McCloskey. It sure was there. And a poor pass by Todd Blackledge. Well, let's see if he's going to go for it with inches to go here. I would have to think he will. Yes. In other words, that was a waste of down. He had an right. extra down. He went for the, for the six knowing that he's going to come back and go for the first down on fourth down. Uh, maybe he wanted to show Tom Osborne something. It was wide open. I think that there are some things they haven't shown Tom Osborne at least tonight. I'm sure Joe hasn't shown everything today. Double tight end. Quarterback sneak. I think he's got it. Todd Blackledge. He needed to get just shy of the 13-yard line. I think he's passed it. About six tons of shoulder pads there. Well, maybe he's a little bit shy of that 13. Question is how much. I think he's got it. Uh, I definitely think he's got it, uh, Stan. He only, they, last time when they measured, he only had a few inches, and certainly, look, look at his forward motion. It would seem that he had it. They've got it. At the length of the football. So Penn State, after failing to get a first down in the entire first quarter, getting seven in the first half, beginning to pile things up just a little bit. Garrity to the left, Jackson to the right, high backfield. Mumford looks to get outside, makes a cut. To the 10 men to the seven yard line. Tony Mumford picks up five. It'll be second and five. Jim Dumont the tackle. Stan, I'd like to make a point. When when you play man to man coverage in the goal line, now watch, now here's a pitch, the whole corner collapse because the defenders 
they were run off by the, the wide receivers because their job is to, to cover the man for man, and that's the best block in football. I want to see that guy with the flapping ears there with that hat. That was, we see that guy again? Second down and five, Penn State at the Rutgers seven yard line. Blackledge in the end zone, touchdown Penn State. Touchdown pass to Kenny Jackson. Blackledge for the third week in a row has passed for four touchdown passes. Well, you know, he beats John Cummings on this, but what, this is good football. They pick up that Cummings was playing Jackson inside out. We called an audible. Uh, uh, Jackson ran for the flag and he laid the ball out there for the touchdown. 12 touchdown passes for Todd Blackledge in three games. Thank you to attempt the extra point. Kick is up and good. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 42, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. Nick Gansitano will get a chance to kick off. And he'll be kicking to the trio of deep receivers for Scarlet Knights. It's Al Smith, freshman tail back in the middle. Gansitano gets it off, but it's coming up short. Smith feels it, and his knee drops on the 13-yard line. Well, Smith running up on the ball, miscalculated just a little bit. And he takes it on the 13, and Rutgers will be forced to start from there. George, we talked so much about this being a pivotal game and perhaps an indicator of how good a Penn State team this was. First half was tough. Uh, the 34 yard touchdown drive seven plays touchdown pass to Jackson the first half was tough had they played well enough to pass that corner do you think I, I would say an offense yes and defense no new quarterback and that is Eric Hockford in the game for Rutgers gives off inside fullback has the football across the 15 and 16 and Mr. Hockford has a Penn State connection as his brother Jeff Hockford that was on the Penn State squad and uh, you so alertly picked that up, but the question you asked me before, we know they can put points on the board. That's the advantage of a big play uh, uh, offense. You can sputter a little bit in one play, bang, you got a, a touchdown or, or seven points with the extra point. But defensively, they still got a lot of work to do. Second down, seven yards to go. Hockford rolling, looking, firing, it is caught by Eric Johnson. Out to the 30 to the 33-yard line. That'll be good for a Rutgers first down. Hockberg against Syracuse two weeks ago was four out of six. No touchdowns, no interceptions. Once again, the same play, uh, smart football. They come out with a play that's been successful. A little fake to Hooper, and they curl Johnson in that little seat. Now, our fans will probably say, why don't they try to stop it? They know how to stop it. But for now, they're either blitzing or letting, letting them have it because they know Nebraska scouts are here. First down and 10, Rutgers, their own 33. Hockford to throw once more. He's rough, he's hit, and he's dropped back at the 25-yard line. Almost loses the football. Then every time they've completed that pass, Penn State has come back on the next play and blitzed them. And here it comes again. Now this time they figure, okay, we're going to blitz you. They get a pretty get good penetration. Hockford stumbles a bit, doesn't have a chance. So it's a loss back to the 25-yard line, a loss of eight. It'll be second down and 18 yards to go for Rutgers. Trailing 42-14, 8.40 to play in the game. Hockford got time. Now it goes up. He's hit and dropped again for a loss, this time back to the 24 as he began to scramble. We talked about the Penn State connection. Of course, his brother Jeff played, but his father Jim is the director of sports medicine at Penn State. You see his hometown, State College, Pennsylvania. Well, he completed four out of six passes in his first game, and he's a good prospect. Straight drop back action. Can't find anybody. He's supposed to be a good runner, tries to get up the middle. John Luton coming in to make the tackle, along with Ofar, so it is third down and 20 yards to go. Motion. Alexander stays at home. There's a hot work to throw. In trouble again. Now he's going to run for it. He's hit at the 30 and falls forward to the 33-yard line. He picked up 10, but it'll bring up fourth down and 10 yards to go. What he showed us, he has quick feet, found a hole. Let's watch this. 
A lot of poise, straight back, good coverage in the secondary. Can't find a receiver, takes off with the ball. Now he gets a good lick from Alexander coming over here, number 95, really puts it through. Harry Hamilton near side, Kevin Bow far side to receive the punt. It'll be Bow back to his 18 yard line. Looks for the wall, gets the 30, and out to the 34 yard line. Well, that's another 16 yard return for Kevin Bow. What a magnificent day he has had. Martello making the tackle along with Sweeney. No Penn State will take over. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 42, Rutgers 14. First down, 10 yards to go, Penn State. This time Kevin Campbell comes wide to the left side. And whistle blows before anything happens. Doug Strang is the quarterback. I was just about to say, it's about time Joe put in a new quarterback. I thought after Black looks through the touchdown pass to Jackson, George, that'd be the last time we'd yep. see him today. Apparently there, there was no penalty. I think they're just waving it off. Someone dropped it by mistake. Tom Barr is in there as the fullback. 7.20 to go. Penn State will win their third in a row. Leading by only a touchdown at the half. They have outscored them 21-0. Doug Strang, sophomore, 6-2-203, Linwood, New Jersey. First down and 10. Washington in motion. Nichols. Out to the 34-yard line, a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. Second down and nine. Rocky Washington split their side. Strang is going to throw. He looks, he fires from the corner, and it is. Is it a reception? No, it is not. They rule it incomplete. The pass intended on the far side for Kevin Campbell, a sophomore, 6'1, 172, McLean, Virginia. Strang stood in that pocket nice and tall. He fired that ball with a lot of velocity on it. Third down, nine yards to go, Penn State. Strang to throw once again. He's rushed, the flag is down, he's gonna be sacked. All the way back at the 25 yard line. Flag was thrown on the play. Let's take a look at this. Now Strang dropped straight back, watch number 22. A uh, bar swing out of the backfield was wide open. A number 95 Washington came in, put them down. Now the penalty is against Penn State. It will be declined. And Ralph Jacomero, who I don't believe has kicked since the first quarter, will get a chance to kick one away. Stan, did we ever get a report on uh, Ashley? No, we did not. What the problem is, if any. Giacomero kicks it, the wind holds it up somewhat. But is taken by Simmons, who's hit as he receives the ball and knocks back a few yards. Brian McCann makes the tackle. Well, I think, uh, watch McCann take it, but that's Brad Sayre, 47, put the first hit on him. But when you hit him, you got to put him down because the rest of the offensive team is going to pull up. And, and if that uh, receiver or the man catching the ball gets to the outsides, you're in trouble. Eric Hochberg, who did complete a pass in his first series of downs, and it was banged around by the Penn State defense, brings up his Scarlet Knights to the line of scrimmage. Baker in motion. Short roll, pass in the flat, incomplete, overthrown, intended for Baker, and I'm sure that Eric Hochberg one day dreamed of playing before 83,000 at Beaver Stadium, but he probably thought he'd be wearing a blue uniform when he did it. Second down and 10. 83,000 plus on hand this afternoon to watch Penn State win their third in a row. 
and get set for the invasion of the Sea of Red. How many tickets do they allow them? I really don't know, uh, Stan, but I'll tell you one thing. They're going to face probably the best offensive line in the country. Second and ten. Hochberg flips it out to the screen. It is overthrown. Intended for the fullback. Who was among the missing. One of the names not carried on the roster. Right. But I noticed uh, Joe's had a little different approach to his uh, putting uh, his substitutes late in the game. He used to substitute as a unit. Now he puts some youngsters and he sprinkles them with a few veterans so they don't give up uh, you know, too many big plays too quickly. we we'll start pointing out some of the fellows who are in there for Penn State defensively. Third down, 10 yards to go, Rutgers, at their own 42. Garrett's coming, dumps it off, and it goes for no gain. Dave Paffenroth made the tackle on Al Smith, the tailback, incomplete, well, the pass complete, but no gain. Well, this is Paffenroth. He drops straight back now. He reached pass as Hotford drops back, sees the screen development off to his right, comes up, puts a good hit on Smith. Here's the punt by Aliska. Hamilton at a 16. 25, 30, look out! 45, 50, knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line of Rutgers. Jim Dumont knocked him out of bounds, but Penn State has gotten close to 300 yards on kick returns today. Actually, absolutely astounding. Hamilton made a great move up the sideline, switched the ball, almost took it all away. There's a timeout on the action, the score. Penn State, 42, Rutgers, 14. We'll be back right after this. Oh, here come the Nittany Lions. 5.39 to play. They have the ball at the Rutgers 43-yard line. Strang and a pitch to Mumford. Looks for a block. Nice hard running inside the 40 and down to the 36-yard line. The gain of seven. Second and three. Jim Martello made the tackle for Rutgers. Jim Martello on the top. Penn State's got three fine tailbacks and one on Nichols and Mumford. They all got good speed, they got good size, and they run tough. That's really not that much of a second string unit because Paterno has used these guys so much with the first unit. I mean, everybody's that's, almost interchangeable. That's correct. There's really no first string. Wing to the left. Here's Tom Barr driving for the first down. Good hard run by fullback Tom Barr, who saw action against Temple, not much against Maryland. Uh, this is a, a, you know, just an individual effort. It's just a quick fullback. Try a little county here. He gets hit dead at the line of scrimmage, but with his own second effort and determination, he makes the first down. You know, and Stan, the kids love it when it's like this, where they uh, they a lot of substitution. It gives them a feeling that they're all part of the team. Absolutely. Very good block inside on that play. I believe it was by 77 Bruni. He made a nice block. Kevin Bow has had a great afternoon. He didn't return a punt for a touchdown. Mark Robinson did that, but he had just been devastating on kick returns all day. The first down goes to Penn State. Strang off the play fake. Looking over the middle, man open, and it is caught for a touchdown. Dean Demidio, the freshman, and a touchdown pass. A 32-yarder, but a flag is down. And it goes against Penn State. It will all go for naught. Well, you feel sorry for Strang because he stayed in his pocket nicely. Now he sees the video to the right, and he gets the ball between two defenders. I thought it was going to be intercepted. Ball sneaked through. Was a touchdown, but it's called back. And here's where the college players are glad they don't announce the numbers, although tomorrow morning, as my coach used to say, the eye don't lie. They will see it on the film. Well, they protect their players, and I, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Professional football, they're getting paid uh, a lot of money, so um, their egos can take. Well, Doug Strang, the chance to throw that touchdown pass, and he did so, and it's illegal use of hands. It'll cost Penn State yardage back to the 44-yard line. Illegal use of hands. So it's a... An 11-yard penalty. It's first down and 21 yards to go. Remember, in college ball, it is from the spot of the foul. Boston College, 14. 
So it's first down and 21 yards to go. Let's see if Strang goes right back at him. Here he goes. Look out. It's a screen. Nichols, 45, 40, inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. That's a good play because they figure on first and 21, they're going to go deep and they throw the screen. I like to make two points. I like Nichols. I like the way he's always going upfield. Let's watch this. Now, watch the way he, at the last minute when he goes down, how he, he, he thrust his body forward. Screen play, play off here to the right. Now, watch him make this inside cut. When he gets hit, he goes forward for a couple more yards. Now, the reason why Joe's letting Strang throw is that he has to get some experience. He's not trying to run the square. A gain of five, it'll be second down and 16 yards to go for the first down. Trying to throw again, over the middle, and it's caught at the 20-yard line and down to the 18-yard line. Dean Demidio, he caught him on the same pattern, and it's a first down for Penn State at the Rutgers 18. And doesn't he look good? He stays in that pocket. He looks his field over, he sees Demidio. To the left of the screen, does a little curl in about 12 yards, a lot of velocity on the ball, and that really gives a kid a feeling of confidence when he gets into what you carry over into a big ball game. So it's first down and 10, Penn State. We have 3.25 to play in the football game. First down and 10. Tom Barr. Left guard and a three yard run to the 15. It'll be second down and seven. Well, Strang has done well thus far. He had the touchdown pass called back on an illegal use of hands. But came right back in the pass to Dean Demidio for the first down. So it's second and seven from the 15. The big red. One week from today. Long count by Strang. Pitch wide. Nickel. Cuts up field. He's the five. Touchdown, Skeeter Nichols. 15-yard touchdown run by Skeeter Nichols. As they say, there wasn't anybody there. Watch the corner collapse. This is what we mean by the corner collapse. Around the end, he gets a good block by the pulling guard, and now it's all on his own, right into the end. I'm wondering if we might get a chance to see that again, dude. Watch the, the guard. I missed the guard. I, I'm going I to assume his numbers, Stan. it he may really have been Bruni, but I, I'd like to see that again. He really delivered a devastating block. Manka to try the extra point. It's up and good. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 49, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. Nick Gonzatano to kick off once again. 2.42 to play in the football game. Penn State now with a 49 to 14 lead. This time Gonzatano gets a better foot into it and it comes to Smith at the eight. Out to the 20 and across the 20 near the 22 yard line. Good Penn State coverage on the kick. Gonzatano only got it to the eight, but they had very good coverage. Brad Sarr. Making the tackle. Now watch it. Right, let's see if we, if we can see who the pulling guard is. Gets a good block from his fullback. Bar, bar. Sealed off the inside. And he really turns it on to get into that end zone. Right, it wasn't the guard. Well, the guard made a nice block, but it was Tom Barr who made the key block on that, the play. A kick out and a seal block. All right, Tom Barr, the senior, with a nice block. First down and 10 Rutgers, their own 22 yard line. Give off to the tailback. He drives. Across the 25 and out near the 27 yard line. Reynold Walbrook, he is a sophomore from Queens, New York. Six plays, 43 yards, three minutes and seven seconds, and Penn State had to do it twice because they had a touchdown pass called back. So they came right back, scoring on the run by Nick Hockberg in the flat. Got some room. Walbrook across the 25 and out to the 28-yard line. It'll bring up third down and four. Brad Saar making the tackle. And now we, we're for a long afternoon, George. The clock says we have 93 minutes and 57 seconds left to play. I'll never make it. Send out for dinner. Got a scoreboard clock has experienced some difficulties, maybe even more than the Penn State secondary in the first half of this game, but 
Well, they tightened up, though, and, uh, you know, they, they're starting to come together, Stan. Uh, I can see it. You can see it. You can feel it. But uh, they got a lot of improvement to make within one week because they, they will be playing against one of the really great offensive teams in college football. And Nebraska can use the pass much more than people think that they do, and they can use it very effectively off their running game. I was going to ask you about uh, Turner Gill. Uh, you saw him... Uh, Nebraska last year, do they throw the ball well? Yeah, they like to throw a uh, play action, especially the option. He's great at, they run, they run a, uh, an option from an eye formation uh, where he's also a, will pitch or keep, and then they will fake that, and he will pull up and try to hit one of the wide receivers on post, on curl. He's very dangerous, and he's, he's an excellent quarterback. Now the clock is rolling again, and they're down to 3.15 to play. It is third down and five yards to go, Rutgers at their own 28-yard line. Hartford looking to throw. He does. He's got a completion up at the 42. No. He dropped the ball on the hit. Rogers Alexander and Mike Suter really lowered the boot. He really threw that ball very well, though, but I, 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 for sure there's no grass because Scott is going to come back and say, hey, a 12, 14-yard curl, been into the inside, it was well open all day long uh, against Rutgers, but I doubt if it will be next week. Maybe there's a sympathetic move, but the clock was moving after the incompletion. Here's Bow back at his 24, out to the 34-yard line, a 10-yard return. That in itself is a good average for a punt returner, so Penn State will take over, with, and the clock is uh, running. I don't know. You know, uh, Get back to Kevin Bow. He was leading the team in all-purpose yardage going into the game, and uh, he amassed a lot more today. So he should be far in the lead uh, as the uh, the all-purpose yardage game. Well, they explain to me now that the clock is running because they're way off, and they're just kind of running into time. Bill Emerson is in there, the running back, and he's got the football and gets a nice haul and drives his way across the 35 and out to the 40-yard line. So Bill Emerson getting a chance to play. He's a sophomore from Whitney Point, New York. Where's that, George? I really don't know. Uh, I'm glad I asked you. <laughs> what? I don't know anything, anything beyond Brooklyn and Long Island. I don't know. That's true. Yeah, most of them. <laughs> All right, Lonergan is in the, the game at quarterback. Dan Lonergan, sophomore, getting a chance to play. And he's going to go back and get a chance to air one out. He does, and it is almost intercepted. That's a bit behind him. A nice defensive play. Harold Young. The cornerback. Well, this particular incident, if this was a different game and uh, the score was on one side, I think they would have called interference. Now, Lonigan, he doesn't have too much on the ball, but watch the defender come right over the, the back of the receiver here. It was meant for Washington, number 29. Now they stop the clock at 55 seconds, so apparently they've caught up. It'll be third down and four yards to go. Strang, or rather Lonergan looking, and he's got his man Campbell at the Rutgers 46-yard line. That's good for a first down. Pass complete to Kevin Campbell, and that gives the Nittany Lions a first down as Dan Lonergan completes his first pass of the season. He shows a nice little touch on this. He'll be to the right of the screen. Campbell did about a 12-yard out to the sidelines, gets the ball over the linebacker, in front of the cornerback coming. Nice reception. Well, they really didn't get out of bounds. They start the clock. 40 seconds to play. Here's Emerson. Flag down. Gets a couple down to the 44-yard. On the uh, series ago, I couldn't quite catch the guy who threw the block, and I credit it to Bruni. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was uh, Mike Dunlay who did uh, laid that block. I wanted to mention that. Well, Stan, I think you're doing a remarkable job with all the, with all the, uh, the substitutions. The defensive There's player Walker. of the game. Mark Robinson, and the defensive player of the game. The offensive player of the game, Mark Robinson. This year's award is sponsored by our good friends at Daily Juice Products, your local Subaru dealer, Anheuser-Busch, and by Westinghouse. Here's Tony Mumford driving to the 43-yard line after the penalty. Mark Robinson, defensive player of the game. He picked off a pass, and he also ran a punt back 92 yards for the first touchdown of the football game. And the first touchdown of the football game, a 92-yard punt return. We have come to the end of this football game. The Nittany Lion is enjoying it, standing on top of the scoreboard. There's 
Kevin Bow. The offensive player of the game is Kevin Bow. This year's award is sponsored by our good friends at Daily Juice Products, your local Subaru dealer, Anheuser-Busch, and by Westinghouse. And Kevin Bow, they did not play a great deal from scrimmage. Was absolutely devastating on punt returns. Didn't get one all the way back for a touchdown, but he must have averaged a good 15 to 20 yards on punt return and set Penn State up with field position all day. That's the end of the game. The final score, Penn State 49, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. That's better. End of the game cue. There was no further scoring, and the game ended with the score, Penn State 49, Rutgers 14. We'll be back right after this. your comments on the game this afternoon oh it's one of those it's funny kind of game we didn't uh we didn't we didn't catch the ball well they played us tough against the run second their linebackers did well uh we, yet we were trying to fight the run all the time and we really probably could have thrown the ball a little bit more but overall i thought it was a decent performance for us uh Breck is a spunky team has some skilled people baker is a is an outstanding football player uh but overall, I guess it was a pretty good performance. Special teams play seemed exceptional today. Well, I think our return game is, is excellent, and our cover, uh, coverage and all those kinds of things are really important for us, and I think we're going to need to keep improving even in that area. What about the defense? You were displeased last week with the aggressiveness in tackling. Did you see improvement today? I thought we saw some improvement, uh, especially second half. I thought the first half we were a little bit you know, unsure of ourselves, and uh, I think we had to come in at halftime and just start to talk a little bit about whether we were winners or losers. It's a game a lot of people have been looking forward to is next week now. Finally, it's here in Nebraska. Your comments on that one? Well, Nebraska is obviously an excellent football team. It should be a good football game. Uh, we have a lot of work to do to be able to play with them. Okay, Joe, thank you. 